It's Monday, ladies and gentlemen. It's Monday. It's Monday? I can't. I don't know it, if I can hear it. Uh, almost Wait. there. Oh. Can I? Yeah. I feel you. I mean, I I there, there it is. You can hear me? Yeah. I can't hear myself. Yeah. I there can hear you. <laughs> this is awful. <laughs> <laughs> can we start the show off right? No, but we have a beautiful new Cody, are you able to turn me up a little bit? Some of my da 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 Good. Okay, we're testing on live, Collider Live. That's what we do here. Professionalism. Welcome back. And talking about professionals, I'm moving to the studio. It's a brand new studio. Yeah. And we got a new table, curtains. We got a clock. What did, what, did anybody like take an axe to that old table? Because I mean, it was ready to explode. And I, I wanted somebody to take. I it. We should so. have done the office space, the office thing. space yes. thing. Just take it outside. Yeah. Get a machete. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, I own a machete. Isn't it interesting the things that lasted what? in the studio? Oh, <laughs> Nothing lasted. Efron didn't make it. No, no. Why do we have to move Efron? I mean, Ellis made it. Ellis and his carrot well, made it. It's quite alive. And why you made it. Of... Oh, he stayed. Nice. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, well, why do we get rid of Efron? Because Efron was freaky and not professionalism. Uh, Ef- Efron freaked Did, people Have out. you listened to this, to this show? <laughs> I, I also, being with you right now, yeah. still can't hear anything. I, right? It's weird. <laughs> oh, you can? It's like I'm, I, I'm, I'm loud. Like, kind of can. The whole thing's I don't know. Yeah. I'm just happy. Let's get, I'm happy uh, we're here. Good run through, guys. So, Cody, <laughs> yeah. let's start the show. <laughs> yeah, great. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, i fix it as we go along. Okay. Josh McCougar was on a boat. I was. My I was. God. Man, it was a long. I mean, Get the sick? bachelor party. No, I mean. Was it the was, person you took a picture with related to you? It's my cousin. Okay, because you yeah. guys look like you are yeah. brothers. Yeah, yeah. It was a family. It was, yeah, I'm. No, now I'm, like, I'm cutting in and out. Yeah. Oh, that's so what's been I. happening with me. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, Power yeah. Through. Power through. Power through. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a wild four or five days. Everybody's flight got delayed yesterday, so we just like partied in the airport. Oh, it just boy. kept going. Uh, what do you mean partied in the airport? Like shots, shots? It got rowdy in wow. the airport. because So all of our flights were taking off at the same time, which is crazy. A bunch of dudes were going back to Philly and Epic. New York. I was going to LA. That never happened. People were going to Dallas. We were all our flights were separated by about 20 minutes, right? And all of us got delayed. Every single flight got delayed for at least three hours, and it turned into a rager. And everybody was on all those flights. The bartender was like, I've never seen anything like this. It was, <laughs> it was epic. It was great. That's we, cool. We got to, I got to Vegas because I had a layover, like a 20-minute layover in Vegas, and this woman's like, she's like, are you okay? And I was like, <laughs> Why? Why do you ask? She goes, you don't look so good. And I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, you better be careful when you walk on because you are pretty drunk. I'm like, you are right. Like, <laughs> it was. It was a scene. It reminds but, me the fun, the thing. Yeah, it's just. It, I remember that there was a day in I don't know where, for Vegas when when that exactly happened. I didn't yeah. know I was going to be able to get on the plane, but because I was, I was just in that mode where it was super. But I was. But yeah, I was focused. focused. But I was also cracking really good jokes. <laughs> So everybody was laughing. Yeah. Like, all right, he's not, he's not too bad. <laughs> and, doing yeah, yeah, it was just in that mode. And I remember it, 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 myself and Adam Winkleman, who I've talked about on this show many times, yeah. uh, we just had a very funny ride. Because he was trying, over to the airport, he was trying, he was buzzed. Yeah. But he was trying to get me, he was taking care of me, right? So we walk in to this cab, and there was a, you know, this woman in there, and it was like, she's like Grace Jones from like uh, the, 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 what, well, the Mad Max. Yeah, Mad you Max. Know? Yeah, yeah. And, she, and she's like, where are you guys going, right? And then, and Winkleman goes, we appreciate it, sir. I mean, ma'am, ma'am, he called us sir by accident, but and he, and he did, and he really didn't mean to do it. Yeah. And I remember just crying, laughing. She's like, it happens all the time. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. And we were just, but anyway, it was just, a, it was a really funny ride. Yeah. And I remember those types of moments. So I'm glad you made Dude, it. it uh, we. <laughs> We got on a call. we got on a boat and in, in on, on Saturday, boat. right? Yeah, it was the the water in Lake Tahoe. Wait, I, oh, I was gonna say I know you said this, but where it was Lake, Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe. Tahoe. Mm-hmm. We get there and everybody's so chill. Like there, it's a very nice town. Everybody's in a good mood. I mean, it's beautiful. It's ridiculously pretty. And we get this young boat captain because none of us were gonna drive a boat. And we had like we stacked with so much booze and everything. It was it was amazing. And I was like, Yo, how cold is the water? Like, is it gonna be really cold? And the guys like, Yeah, it's pretty chilly. No big deal, dude. I could not stop my body from shaking when I got out of the water for like 30 to 45 oh, minutes. Oh, God, that's like, the worst. We were all five or six of us. I like went Leonardo right DiCaprio flip. on Titanic. Dude, it's yeah. seriously, I w- at one point I was like, Flip, is it, that was the name of our boat captain. I was like, is it going to stop? Of course it was. Yeah, his name was Flip. It was great. I mean, I don't know if you want your boat captain's name to be Flip. <laughs> yeah. Both Flips, and then, you know, who knows what's going to happen. True. No, I yeah. thought what you were getting at. Well, it's, um, you always want me to explain everything. I do. You want me to explain it all the time, so there we go. I do. Something else to explain to everybody that I'm actually, I'm so pumped for is that our guest Yesterday, uh, Sean Waltman, aka X Pac from uh, the Attitude Era. I haven't seen him in almost 20 years. 
Um, in person? In person. Because we, he did that bit for uh, Schmodown. He did. He but, did yeah, for a while was... ago. He was with, with, with the Action Boys against Top Ten. And I didn't realize you haven't seen him in 20 years. Almost 20 since years. Since the day? Well, once I was working there. When I was wow. working there. And, when, and he was, and I've, I've, told, I've told this story uh, many times. And we, yeah, it was absolutely right. We were, I was, one of my first days at the WWE, and like the house shows, if you don't know how house shows are, it's like even though they have the, the televised programs of Raw and SmackDown, the house shows they still do all over. And it's like the, if you want to say like a non league Like a mini match, tour? But it's like a non league match. So if, okay. they, if, they, if they're performing at the Staples Center, then they do another, you know, they'll do a, Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar, but it's not a televised thing. And it's just so you can go and play the marquee okay. price for it. And it happens all the time. Gotcha. The house shows. And they do them. And so Sean and uh, Stephen Regal. We're, we're driving out, and they said, "Hey, do you want to go?" Said they said to me, and I wasn't—I didn't have to work it. I could have just stayed at my hotel, but I was like, oh, "I want to go take a road, a road trip with, with X Pac and and Sir R- William Regal, uh, Stephen Regal." And he was like, uh, "So we're, we're we're driving, and I think that it was Sean that was driving." And he goes, "You want to smoke? You want to smoke a joint?" And I'm like, "And and it looked like he was testing me, yeah. right?" And I go, "Yeah, of course." <laughs> And he, and he passes it back. And goes, I knew you were cool. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we're like, and, and we took this. We took this drive. And and the funny thing is that he was. He, and he, he's talked about this many times. Anyway, he he was flipping off the because he, he was he was an, in, in the, jumping off the top rope a lot of the times, mm-hmm. right? And I'm watching him going flawless, and he's stoned out of his tits. And he's <laughs> and he's but he's able to do it with with you know. There's some people that just do it. You can play basketball. It, yeah. I couldn't even talk to people. Uh-uh. Referees, uh, one of the referees, he's like, "How you doing?" I'm like, oh, it's a bit angry. <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, that kid's stung." Like, and I, I do, yeah. And I think, and I wasn't even working, but I think he told, he think he told uh, Stephanie McMahon because Stephanie's like, "Just remember, you got to like separate being friends with the wrestlers and this and that." And I'm like, "Oh, she knew I was." <laughs> but I went, to, we went to like a diner, the three of us. We that's hung out for, like the whole, we hung out all day. I think when it's definitely the lightest thing you're doing, that's why he was able to do all that. Like that was that was Kitty to him. Tim, back yeah, in the day. yeah, 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 for yeah sure. Yeah. Yeah, back, sure. Of course, back in the day. Right, yeah, back in the day. Uh, and he's he's. But Does he, he still know, wrestle right now? No, no. I mean, he, he did, but not not Sometimes, active. Sometimes, like in Europe right, and, right. Okay. and stuff, he still works for WWE okay. now, though. Uh, and he does just everything. Like yeah. you're gonna when at least if you talk to him outside, he's the best dude. He's, he's so really cool. open about all of his history with everything yeah. too. Uh, yeah. And he came and he came back from it. Him and like Razor Ramon and the guys that were they, they you know they had problems you know and they they came back from it <laughs> and that was that's and he's very open about coming back from it. Yeah. And Did he ever win that title? Like a he won an Intercontinental title? Championship, I think, a couple times. Team Championship. He was. Uh, he was. He was. He ran with like Triple H. He was part of DX. You know, DX uh, was like the big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was. That was. He, it was. Yeah. He <laughs> yeah. Was part I know of what that was. Yeah. Yeah. As an attitude. Attitude was one. It was super popular, right? And so he. Do you want to describe for the listeners what you just did? Uh, yeah, suck I did that like the suck it X yeah. thing because yeah. every <laughs> douchey idiot in high school was always like, yeah, let's do yeah. it. Suck it. Yeah. yeah. And suck, you would do it too. Suck, <laughs> suck what, Josh? <laughs> suck what? Uh, yeah, be suck a ween. Suck the ween. So it's gonna be cool to have him in here at eleven o'clock. Uh, we just kind of shoot the shit for a little bit. Oh, I can't wait! I'm yeah, so excited. I've been waiting to, to talk to him for a long time, so it'd be nice. Twenty to have him years, in here. apparently, 20, like nineteen. <laughs> well, I mean, again, we talked through, through social media. I just haven't That's sat so in a room. With him. So, um, yeah, be like twenty years. So I'm I'm going through security, and my license photo is from twenty two, years ago, two thousand one. Oh, good like it is. I just have never changed it. You're allowed to do that. <laughs> yeah, like it was just like. Like it was on my Pennsylvania ID, and I just like it's saved yeah. through, so whatever. So I get to the airport security, and the guy's like, "Dude, you gotta update this picture." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "You have a mustache in this one. You're clearly 15." Like this yeah. is oh, it's it, really so. I, now I need to go update my my license. It's a scene. Oh, well, uh, you wore that mustache too. Yeah. Oh, Wait, the mustache. Do you have pictures was... of the mustache? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I posted on Instagram. Oh, okay. I just heard yeah. about this though. Fantastic. Apparently, we're all gonna have to go to the DMV soon because wow. now we need new identification cards to travel. Right. Have travel you guys where? Heard right? about this? Out of the and country? No, oh. no. Just in general. To get yeah, on a plane, you're going to now need a new, not a license, a travel card in the next like two years or yeah. something. I, I, Why? So I, I, real that ID I'm not sure. Not the Real ID Act? Yeah. The Real ID Act of 2005. Oh, I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm now going to have a beginning license. Beginning October 1st, 2020. That's uh, mm-hmm. my birthday. <laughs> is it? Yeah, October not 2020, 1st? but October 1st. Well, 2020 yeah. is also your, it's not your but day I wasn't of born birth. On yeah. That It'd be weird. But so it'll be your birthday maybe. then. On yeah. 2020, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. That'll be fun. Which like is going to be the death of me because going to the DMV for me is traumatizing. Yeah. yeah. First of all, getting there. Yeah, but you know what? In 2020, though, <laughs> people are going to be stoned the whole month of April. Yeah. For 2020, you think so? the whole, it's the whole month. It's not just one day. It's the yeah. whole month. 
Mm, but what does that right. have to do with the driving thing? I don't give a shit. I thought you were going to say something that made it so I didn't have to go to the DMV. No, you got to you can get sto- you can get stoned and go in April yeah. uh, of 2020. Uh, I watched Big Little Lies last night. I, d- I haven't watched anything yet I from did last as well. night. Second episode still the best. I the, thought this one was really good. They're doing, like, short, it was short. Episodes. They're doing yeah. short episodes. It ended so like fast. 43 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I I still cat still not out of the bag when Kat it comes Stevens? to Meryl. Oh. How, you don't think so? I think she's a you cuckoo. Do? I think she's a cuckoo. I think she's the reason why the the, the son was such a. I maniac. love that so much. Yeah. That's crazy. What did El- Ellis during the live stream? What did he say? About, <laughs> oh, he said something about Meryl. And you're Street. like, yep, we play it every day on Glide Alive. Oh Alive. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, he's like, yeah. That's right. We were talking about Big Little Lies, and he's and he said like, have you guys seen what Meryl, Meryl Streep's been doing in that show? He's like, yeah, you know, actually. I said the scream, right? He's like, oh yeah, the scream. I go, he's like, you watch it. I go, we talk about it quite often on uh, on the Collider <laughs> Live. He's like, oh, so you, he's still like, you still do, do that, that show. <laughs> Speaking of which, the uh, so the, the collision was incredible. It was so good. We yeah. live streamed it on. Is this a spoiler time or not? No, no, not yet. Because it doesn't air to the public until Friday. But that is yeah, something. It was you, incredible. If you want to see it, it lived up to the hype. I mean, Callan Askin Smets lived up to the hype. The Shire Wolves, Odd Couple, Odd Couple lived uh, lived up to the hype. And calls the, by our name. Odd couple. Yeah, the manager bowl, Oyama versus Miller. The whole event was just so much fun. And you can check it out if you go to uh, the schmodownlive.com. It's still available, the live stream, until tomorrow. Then it'll be available to all patrons. And then either Friday or Saturday is when it goes up to the public. But it's, it's worth it. Which was your favorite match? It's a it's a oh toss up. It's a toss Christian. up. It's a toss up between Ugh. Inner Geekdom and uh, and the teams. They both that rarely happens. Usually there's one that kind of stands out. Like last year, I think who's the, it's spectacular? Who's the Boston Shire will stood out of that t- entire thing. Um, this one, yeah. I thought, I thought, <laughs> Smet, up, yeah, I thought, don't Smets, be too proud. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, we I, lost. I so thought Smets and Kalinowski <laughs> were going to stand Spoilers. out, but the Shire Wolves and uh, and and Odd Couple was everything I wanted it to be. So it, it's between those two. I've yeah. watched both of them. My my daughter watched uh, the other one. And I won't tell you how she reacted because if I tell you how she reacted, then you'll know. Um, Did she watch it live? No, she watched the next day, and I had to. There was a lot. There was a lot of emotions going on in general. That doesn't say anything, but there's a lot of emotions. Um, what is your high? Yeah. I was on a uh, on the flight to Tahoe. Yes. Uh, I'm sitting down, and I have that hideous mustache, and I got a lot of looks in the airport. Like I'm, it was an early flight, and I'm in line at the Southwest counter, and this woman went. <laughs> like it was aggressive, right? So, but was she up downing you, or what? Just like, that? like, what is that thing on your face? Didn't expect to see that okay. mustache that early yeah. in the morning. Yeah. <clears throat> so, <laughs> I'm sitting on the flight, and this girl sits down next to me. It was not a full flight. Bring up the mustache, and to... yeah, it's on my Instagram. Yeah, I think yeah. I posted Where it. Were you supposed to wear it into here? I was going to, but he I, wasn't here. Yeah, I, I ended up leaving earlier yeah. on Wednesday, and then story, yeah. I was going to keep it and wear it today for the yeah. show. I just couldn't look at it on my face anymore. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm this girl. I'm this girl sitting next to me. Is there's a you know the aisle seat, the middle seat is empty. So she, but she's in the aisle. Yeah, she keeps kind of like looking. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I she looked at me a couple times, and I thought she maybe wanted me to like open the window. And then I was like, oh, she this mustache is like offending her. I think she may want to make a comment. And then I stand up, and the flight ends, and I stand up. And she goes, Hey, uh, I'm just a huge Motown fan. Me and my husband. And I was <laughs> like, oh, Okay, cool. Oh, <laughs> thank you so nice. much. Awesome. Like, you should have said something earlier in the flight right. when you sat down. Or, I scream, talked to you or about screamed wildberry. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah, it was great. That's really cool. Great. Uh, I love I, that feeling. Although yeah. my least favorite place to be recognized is the, the plane. <laughs> I, the that, that hasn't happened to me yet, I don't think, it's, except at Comic Con. Bathroom's always odd. Well, Ken, it's, Ken not has the, a, it's not the same for us because it's not like I'm standing next to somebody. True. I, so you go into the stall, the next stall over. Um, yeah. <laughs> excuse me. Uh, I just want to let you know. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm a you big know, fan of the odd couple. <laughs> see, that's rude because you know I can't do that. No, that's what mm. she's doing. Mm. And then you're, yeah. <laughs> and then exactly. you're just tinkling. Ken has a really funny bathroom story. I think from like two Star Wars celebrations Shocker. ago, where like three guys just basically cornered him in the bathroom. Like, can we get a picture? And he's like. I'm I'm literally peeing right now. <laughs> what? I, I can't st- I can't turn. To- Let me finish. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Oh, that's good. Perfect. Really good. Really good. So, uh, did they think he was gonna like sprint out? They wouldn't get a chance after he put yeah. his penis away. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe because that was that that celebration was nuts. It was that was the Chicago, not uh, Chicago, uh, the Orlando, the Orlando one. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't they wrong. announce they're going to Anaheim next Anaheim. year? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, tickets are already on sale. Like and 95%. sold out. I don't like that. What's that? Anaheim. You don't like that they're in Anaheim? Yeah, I love it. Hmm. I don't got to travel. Yeah, you don't pay for anybody to travel. Remember what happened in Chicago? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, but I, but I always, my wallet does. Too. I like <laughs> going to an event because I'm not close enough that I have to come home for any reason. Like when I, if I go to Anaheim, I get five thousand call. Come back for this. Come back for this. Come back for this. Oh, I'm gonna pull you. <laughs> Oh, poor you. You have to work a Star Wars convention. No, I know. I'm saying I, get, I, I know where, work I know the, where the conversation is going to go with this one. Trust I wa- me. I, wanna, I get it. I, it's not the Star Wars convention that I have I'll to work. I'll put my arms behind my back and put my chin out. It's the other stuff that I have to work at home, and then I can come home. But when I'm like, oh, sorry, I'm in Chicago, yeah. as opposed to, oh, sorry, I'm 45 minutes away, it's yeah. not as good of an excuse. I mean, the traffic getting there on a Friday is not ideal, but also yes, waiting in an airport for six hours to no, go somewhere else isn't ideal I'm, either. I'm good. I also yeah. do not go to Anaheim unless I'm going to Disneyland. It does yeah. not make sense to me. It makes sense. Fine. Um, You're bored with that, too. We can move on. Good combo, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, what, else, what else is going on? We didn't talk about, yeah, we didn't talk about Big Little Lies, I guess. Uh, it was great, it, but we can't talk too much up. about it because I don't want to ruin for It Josh. just feels like a big movie. It just feels like a big movie. Like it's gonna be what is it, eight or ten? Do we know? Mm, I don't think ten. I think that would be great. Yeah, I th- six. I I thought yeah, the I thought the same thing, but uh, it might be eight. Is there gonna be? Wait, is this the second it's season? Eight. eight. Yeah, this is second season. Is, is there eight? gonna be a third? I don't know yet. It depends well, on how this at, we didn't think there was gonna be more than same one either. because of the source material, but right. then there was a second one. Seven, that's seven, right. seven episodes. So shoot, there's seven. only four left. We were gonna start last night, and then I fell asleep. Yeah. I'll be honest, though. I think that. I am way underwhelmed with this season as compared to last you season. Didn't like, you didn't like episode two? I liked it. I, I just find this to be... No, I think you're going to love this episode. Okay. Laura Dern's character yeah. is... She's by she's far... She's the best. The and, best. and in this episode, she that shines. line... You're not going to know what I'm talking about, Josh, so it's not spoiler. The line about the polar bears... It was really just, funny. It got me. Yeah, it was I, good. Like, it understood my whole core. And Especially because it's just playing into this whole arc that she's been doing the entire season. It's really I good. I will not not be rich. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. That, well, that, it, I'll it, give you that one. It carries on. It carries yeah. over. It carries yeah. on. I think I'm... Like, the, thing, the storyline I'm, like, most bored by is... Zoe Kravitz's like I'm just kind of like it's frustrating with her storyline because we (laughs) all know what she did so we need to cut to the chase like tell them so we can start moving forward and I get it you I I, get you killed I can't look at Zoe Kravitz and not think of Sinead yeah yeah. every single time totally really oh yeah yeah. she's been getting it all her life Sinead has yeah yeah You don't, I don't see, see it? that. You don't yeah. see it? Really? really? No. Yeah, she's been getting oh it all God. her life. And, uh, and, and the first time I met her, I said, I was like, do you get she's like, Zoe Kravitz? Yeah. I was like, yeah, she get it all the time. Really? Yeah. 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 Totally. Huh. No, um, I didn't see that. Anyway, what else are we talking about? What else is going on in the world of news, of movie oh, news? Oh, you want news? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, okay, great. Um, <laughs> He's hungover today. Give him a break. Yeah. Oh, wait. Who, Riley went to a 25-year high school oh, yeah. reunion. I did. Is that what happened? Yeah. Because you seem a little, you seem I, a am, off. I am still hungover. Yeah, that's what I thought. Saturday was ridiculous. Okay. I was just drinking like I I haven't like drunk you were in high school. that much since yeah, high school probably. Mm-hmm. With Did all you my drink high school in high school? Blood. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And uh but yeah, it was I don't remember the Uber ride home. Oh. That's how drunk that's I was. Yeah, it was great. You Ubered all the way home? Yeah. Well, no, I stayed at my grandmother's uh, uh, place, and, uh, and and the uh, high school reunion was like 15 minutes away in Huntington Beach, so it was, it was great. It was fun, though? It was really fun. Got cool. to see a lot of old friends, um, you know. Do you yeah. ever think that, like, with high school reunions now, because of social media, it's, like, not as big of a surprise to see some people because you kind of follow? Hundred yeah. percent. When my uncle showed up to his high school reunion, everybody said, we thought you died. Yeah, Like, exactly. so, yeah, definitely, when people show up now, it's like, mm, I saw you two days ago on Instagram. Yeah, right. yeah. I knew exactly what you looked like. That, totally. was, that was a big thing there because um, everybody, because of what I do, everybody was like, oh, my God, they knew everything that we were doing. And I, I was like, what are you up to? And, <laughs> and they're like, I'll see you on Facebook. I'm like, Oh, okay. Right. Uh, so yeah. someone starts great. singing Zubli Zoo to you. Yeah, probably. I, I have my. I'm just going to do that. and uh... It took him a minute to. Yeah, uh, I know. Because he's off. It's Monday. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's Monday uh, and you're hungry. I have my tenure this year for oh. high school reunion, yeah. and I feel like it's pointless. Like, yeah. I, I, I see all of them at Good Thanksgiving dick. still anyway. I'm with you. I know. <laughs> 10 years is uh, like I, my, my 20s coming up. And I was in, uh, <laughs> I was in, I was on, like, I was vice president of student council. But so the, a couple of the senior class officers reach out, can you help us plan it? I'm like, no, I'm yeah. sorry. We're too far. That's what I told totally. the people. Like, 
I, it doesn't make sense for me to plan something in Boston. Yeah. I'm not there. You have to go to the places. Like, yes, you can call, but you really need to go scout out the places. Like, everybody still lives there. I'm the only person who lives here. Just go to a bar. Like, I just put it at the local bar. Just yeah. pass the saloon. That's what we did. Our our class president didn't uh, do it this year. Okay. And uh, so somebody picked up the reins, and, and we got a great little side area and a bar, and it yeah. was perfect. And How the many drinks people? were flowing. I would say there was about about 70. How many people no. were in your class? No, probably about 60. Uh, about 200 in the class. So a lot of we people had, didn't show up. We had 530. So I feel yeah. like it's too big to have a corner of a bar. I feel, feel like you have to have a space. Like an event space. It was nice yeah. and intimate it, yeah. as opposed to the 20 year. That, that was like huge. Because everybody was like, you know, it's 20 years and we haven't done it in 10, so here we are. Because you're all, everybody's allowed to bring their their husband and wives, Yeah, right? and yeah. a lot of people did, and uh, it was really nice to meet a lot of uh, the significant others and, you know, just chat and be like, oh, my God, I can't believe you do this with your life um, in a good way, you know, and so it was fun. Yeah. Who, who, was the, uh, who was the guy that John Cusack fought in Gross Point Blank for yours? You know, the guy, the guy had to prove that he was still pretty cool, but he still... He's, doesn't really, yeah, well, did you have, like, have a, job. a Mike Dexter or He's like, not yeah. Dexter? Yeah, could, uh, I'm trying to remember. You remember Again, the movie? I'm, it's like, yeah, I'm, I, I know the movie. Wait, remember the it's, guy that he's about to fight? Not, not the guy he yes, fights in the hall. So, it's not the, the guy he fights in the hall was assassin. It's the guy that wants to fight him. He's like, what do you want to fight me? He's like, and then he has a conversation with him and he, and he has a good coach. I don't coping, really have, it's gonna work eventually. Yeah. I don't him, really have the guy, but there was. One of my friends, and we, of course, we're friends now, But yeah. uh, and I was hanging out with him, Evan, and I was like, I'm like, Evan, remember the days when you would bully the shit out of me? Mm-hmm. And he's like, I never did that. And I'm like, you and your Metallica t-shirt <laughs> and douche. your mullet, and you would just boom. And he's like, yeah, that was, he sorry about you? that. Yeah, he would come by and like, you know, just put the elbow in, right. you know? My brother and I were talking about like the bully situation because he is like, I think me bullying you really helped you in your life. And I was like, yeah, I think. I mean, yeah. my brother would walk down the hall and I'd have like books in my hand. He'd just smack them out. That's a difference, though, between sibling. I don't even say it's a bullying as much as like a sibling. You know, that's like the older brother, like kind yeah. of breaking balls and stuff, too. Yeah. As opposed to like there's, there's a kid at my, at my daughter's karate. And it's like, and, and it's, I don't know, he's not like, he's not like Biff Tannen, but he's just, <laughs> yeah. but he's just the one that's, he can't, he can't be quiet. It's like, he's, he's always, he, he makes fun of all the other kids. And yeah. I'm like, kid's a blue belt. It's like, it's like, isn't he, he shouldn't have passed. It's like the Kramer in the Seinfeld episode when yeah. he's beating up the little kids in the karate. <laughs> right. right. But yeah. it's just like, he shouldn't have passed. Yeah. Like, it's like, that should be <laughs> still what do his parents do? I don't know if they know. The one is, is the one dad looks like Jason Patrick. I'm like, I was like, you know, look, you look like Jason Patrick, then I guess you could kid can be a blue belt <laughs> dickhead. But, uh, but, um, it's blue. It's good. It's a good belt. It's a decent belt. It's a good belt. I don't know the hierarchy. What's the hierarchy of belts? Black. So credit. Black is the highest. Yes. I know black. White. Yeah. That's the first, the first brown. So and then and then in between. Well, it's, different, it's different from like when kids do like different degrees. Yellow. Second degree, yellow. Second degree. Yellow. Second degree. There's got to be a yellow one. Yeah, mm-hmm. There's a green one. Purple. I've seen. Orange, blue, green. Got it. It's the whole thing, baby. Okay. Um. Anyway, so movie news. Delusion. Fuck you. Oh, look at you. I like it. I like, you like it. it now? Are you coming around on no, it? No, I don't think it's. If he's funny when he does it, but someone, I like. Someone it. said to me, I don't know if this is gonna make a lick of difference. They said, here's the reason why she didn't get it. Because you didn't tell her that the name of the character is blah 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 the the punk magician, I'm like I don't think I that's don't gonna make a difference. That. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do we have the clip from the Spider-Man clip? Oh, yeah. Did you put it in there? And yes. Collider tweeted it, it out. Yes. Okay. What's Let happening? me find it. Let me find it. It's because it got erased. Yeah. Oh, Speaking oh, of the, clips. The, the the link got erased oh. off the the outline. Okay. So Speaking of clips, why I, I didn't you respond it. to my text message? You got it too late. I got it, and I looked at it this morning, and I was like, talking about seen it. it. Oh. I haven't heard the clip yet, okay. but it's the booty remix, right? Yeah, I know what it was. I just didn't get what? a chance to listen. There's a booty remix. Yeah, I remember I told you a long time ago, and I couldn't find it, and I searched the inner DMs of my Facebook and found the, the deep, booty remix. The dark remix. web. Yeah, it's yeah. the dark stuff, huh? Yeah. What's yeah. in there? It's a guy for Collider Live who did a oh. remix to bo- the booty song. Oh, okay. Does Cody have it? Oh, I sent it to Christian. That's uh, a mistake. Yeah. Okay. That's a botch. That's a big mistake. Yeah. Why would you send it to me? Because I like your approval. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> and Cody didn't get the, te- the the engineer that puts the sound in. He didn't, he didn't get, get the text. Mm. Maybe should maybe a group text would have helped out there. <laughs> I, I wanted you to like it first. I'll tell you what I like. Okay. I had an amazing, just amazing moment on Saturday. And even though the event was great and everything, too, and I had some great moments, my favorite moment of Saturday was hanging out with Cody and Adam Smith for about, I was about, I was on my way home. And I saw them just kind of hanging out in the alley, 
Like a, like a, what time are you talking? It's like nine nine o'clock, Cody. Yeah, it was before that, maybe like seven or eight. No, it was it was, it was after. It was definitely okay, after maybe that. Maybe it was nine. I don't know. It's closer uh, to nine. It was. Okay. You know, what? it was around. Maybe we'll you know, you're right. Five. You're right. It was around eight o'clock. It was around eight o'clock because I see them there, and they're just hanging out, and so I just have conversations. If you haven't had the pleasure of having a conversation with Adam Smith, then I then I have pity on your soul because it, it <laughs> he is, is the best. He is absolutely the best, and just listening to him talk is he, Boo! yes. The conversations that uh, you can have with this man is amazing. I can't mm-hmm. wait. It's it's one of the only benefits I think we're going to have when Cody uh, is on his leave is that I'm hoping that we get Adam Smith as engineer a couple times. Yeah, um, we will. He, but, well. he was overwhelmed uh, the Chicago disaster. I felt I felt bad for Which one Adam. Is the live event. No, so after Chicago, when you guys all got stuck and everybody oh, was, was stuck, oh, yeah. Yeah. Adam was doing the show, and he was like, "I don't know what anything is." I was mm-hmm. like, "Okay." Yeah. Yeah. Well, he. Um, I but, listened to those. That was funny. You were nice to him. Yeah. He did not know. I'm no, a nice guy. Job. He'll learn. He does a great yeah. job. But anyway, we were just talking, and next thing I know, it, it was nine o'clock. It was yeah. like an hour. I just hung out there with them too. It was just I. I, I was. Not stressed out during the day, but it's a lot. You're just moving yeah. at 100 miles an hour, and all these things are happening. It's like this big event, and just to chill with these two guys out there, just shooting the ship because Cody, Cody Does was chill very... me in weed. No, oh. but uh, but Cody was hanging. No, you, yeah. yeah, Cody was. You know, in the him, he's on the, the 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 desk or the desk, the, the, the one board. He's on the board like, the whole time engineering, and he's and he's moving like a at 100 miles an hour and a half hours. for three and a half hours. <laughs> yeah. So you just see this was his. <sighs> and he's just sitting down like he lived in the alley. And, <laughs> and, and but Adam said it's very relaxing back here. He goes, hell, I could do this. I could do this all week. I said, I don't think you do it in ninety degree weather. Yeah. But it was a nice breeze. That was a nice breeze, don't you think, Cody? It was beautiful. It was kind of the, just coming through the tunnel there. It was, yeah, it was fantastic. It was good. Nice. Yeah. It was really. It was really good. It was that, nice. that back alley does have a certain je ne sais quoi. Do you know what I mean? Something it about sure it. does. It, you know, when it's it like, doesn't smell like dog shit. I totally. Guess yeah. yeah. Um, okay, anyway. we do have the link now. Right, it's on the it. outline, Cody. If you see it, it's under videos and photos so and weirdness. This, this is a, th- so this is a clip that we... T- can you just go to widescreen, please? Here, watch this. So this is a clip from as, as Far From Home is coming out very soon. We're going to see the screening this Wednesday. Okay. And oh, I hope I get on that. Here's Mysterio, right? Here he goes. He's going to attack... Mr. Parker. Yeah, we got a big we go. water monster. It's still good. I'm fooling you and you don't like it. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> you can, and that is uh, who, 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 who give video, G- video Conjure Club. Club. Yeah, it's that really good. Great. I think he's done he's done some other videos yeah. for us in the past, right? Can you go to vi- his videos? Because because that was I mean that was amazing. I'm a fan of that. I think he did. He what? did a roast con pollo. I just said. Did he? Did uh-huh. go, can you go to full videos? Cafe con leche. Oh yeah, roast con. No no no. He did the he did the the Jean Claude Van Damme yeah. mixed with a roast con pollo. Mm. Uh, yes yes yes. That's what he did. Um, and by the way, David B uh, has done us. He did he we debuted his song for he did Corruption's new theme. Mm. We debuted it. How is it? It's fantastic. It's really good. And then he also did uh, he did a, a theme that he's working on but right then now. Then I heard it probably. Yeah, probably didn't realize it. But, uh, yeah. but the Evil Geniuses, he did one for the Evil Geniuses, and it's oh, a perfect. mix between like uh, Gangsters Paradise meets uh, Shipping Up to Boston. Really, it's, oh. it's awesome. It's awesome. Very he sent nice. it to me this morning. JT, like both JT, songs. well, JTE because the first, his first pass wasn't that, and JTE, I had suggested something along those lines. JT responded, "I like that. If you can do that, he does. You know, a good David B is overnight does it." And JT just responds with thumbs up. That's it. It's amazing. <laughs> it's JT. Yeah, yeah. Man, a few words. I get so many questions about this. I feel like you've told me before, but how are you able to use all this music? We've talked about because it's the demonetization thing. Yeah, or? you just got to take that. You take the hit, and, and you, you don't you don't monetize the episode. It's basically that's how you're paying for it. It's like the money goes to them. Got you it. know, the money that comes in from the YouTube mm-hmm. thing goes to them. You're paying, that's how you're paying for it. Ultimately, are you going to have somebody do all original music? That's what I want to start to yeah. do. Yeah, because I want to do it very – what Jim Jeffries used to do for uh, – like he did the rock steam. He did all – for WWE, they had a, they had a guy. So David B. and I – Man, started, the wild, wild Bears could use a, a theme song. A new one. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. That's, that's what I'm doing. So I'm working with him to do more – I'm just going to phase out the all the – 
songs that we do use and just have original music for everybody. As yeah. long as we're admitting things, it's awesome because it matches our name, but nothing gets me less pumped then than the, the odd couple, couple of Yeah, I get it. I get it. Well, we'll do some new. And we can do some so like, not. Yeah, he might be able to do something for that, too. Um, all right, moving on. So, Riley, some yeah. movie news and things that have happened. Yes, yeah, speaking of Tom Holland and Spider-Man, he was yeah. promoting Spider-Man on the Graham Norton show, yes. and he spoiled Avengers Endgame, um, and people are going crazy. They're going crazy what against he, him. Oh, be, because, because he just assumed everybody watched him. He's assumed everybody's watching him. And then so there was a, a huge contingent of uh, Tom Hall, Holland fans that were like, Wait, when hey, was this? This was on the Graham Norton show. No, uh, not where. When? Saturday. Saturday. That's when it airs. Yeah. Oh, so this week? I would have yeah, this past yeah. weekend. People are upset that he did Endgame spoilers this week? Yeah, well, yeah. 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 So that's what a lot of people coming to his defense are saying. It's been months. You should have seen it. Totally. And he's promoting Spider-Man yeah. Far From Why Home. Why are you watching his interview if you haven't seen it? It carries right. on. Tonight. And that that thread that he spoiled carries over into Spider-Man Far From right. Home. So he was talking about it. Of, you know, in the context of the movie and where his character is at now. But can and you why. tell us what he said? Or I mean, do I spoil it? It's, sure. a bit, it's, the, well, it's the biggest spoiler. Again, we've been talking we about Avengers spoilers. Endgame forever. So if you have not watched Avengers Endgame, yeah. turn it off because we're going to talk about what he said. You've been warned. Go ahead. Here we go. He's talking about his character and dealing with the aftermath of the death of Tony Stark right. and how it colors his character in Spider-Man Far From Home. And so people have been losing their mind. I'm avoiding Avengers spoilers and then watch Graham Norton for five minutes and you ruin the whole movie for me. Blah, 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 are blah. You, are you kidding? Yeah. That's, that's yeah. I'm with you, Rox. I, I don't I don't think it should have been that big of a deal because no. if you haven't seen it by now, this, this thing is almost the highest grossing movie of all time. Right. And they're going to do this re-release with okay. like, okay. yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. you guys talked about it last oh, I week. I thought you were joking. Yeah, no. we talked about it yeah, in, yeah, in, in, in length. length. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, what the, like, what's wrong with people? Yeah. So he was getting hammered and then. This is not a 20 hour show. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy though. I yeah. mean, poor kid. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I did see him though in a great uh, interview a show that uh, you probably watched already because you watch everything. The Chef Show. Oh, Chef Show's great. Oh, I just watched it last Dude, I night. It. I watched great. three episodes last night. Yeah, I love yeah. it. It's it's John Favreau's show. Yeah, I didn't Fun realize Netflix, that the guy. Right? Yeah, I didn't realize. Well, what was beauty? The beauty of it is he just shot the show, and I guess then he just sold it to Netflix after yeah. he shot it. But he so I and I can't remember the chef's name, but it's the guy. Roy Choi. What, what is it? Roy, Roy Choi. Choi, who started Kogi. Yeah, and I didn't know that because mm-hmm. I love the Kogi truck. He, he was the like the consultant, consultant on, on Chef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the big the big thing. The Kogi truck was, I don't know if he's still doing if they still do it here, but so. it's like the Kogi truck was just a big hot spot. Oh, in, you know, yeah, yeah, I in, recognize in, it. In LA, it. and they would drive around, and, and everyone talked about how great Crushed. it was. And I'm like, how great is it? I remember I, I would chase the truck down. It was so good. <laughs> What'd you get at Kogi? Just the, the Korean beef tacos, and they were just so good. Um, Change the game. That was like the, so that good. was when the food truck exploded. Yeah, like yeah. that was well, but the he truck. Said for it. It. He said it, he says um, it in the, in the show. Mine was the pudding one. What? My pudding? You guys never been to the pudding, pudding truck? truck? There's a oh, pudding truck. Oh, that's when it exploded for me. But he, but he said though that it was like what it was is a Twitter. Like it this. was around the same time as Twitter. Oh yeah. Like so, right. he, he had caught Twitter, uh, and he said he said it was just kind of this perfect thing. Mm-hmm. But the the second episode, what was cool about it was that they it was probably during one of the tapings of one of those movies, whatever, because they had Kevin Feige, uh, Tom Holland, Russo's. Robert Downey Jr., the Russo brothers, Favreau, and and then Rachoy at the table. And th- not only did they talk about all the chef stuff, but they started talking about how Tom Holland got cast and doing the, the chemistry test. I haven't test seen with, this episode yet. It's the second episode. Oh, it's the second yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. I only the, saw the first one oh, with okay, okay. Gwyneth and, uh, and, and... Bill Burr. Bill Burr. Yeah, yeah which, was, exactly. which is awesome, too. I can't believe you watch that. What? I love Bill Burr. Oh, I know, but Gwyneth. Oh, I wanted to see if Gwyneth, because Gwyneth makes a comment about Spider-Man, like I yeah. didn't know, isn't it? People yeah. overreacted. And I, I just, I found her part to be quite lame and boring, but Bill Burr was great. Bill Burr was really good. I, that was, <laughs> but I, I didn't, the thing with, with the Gwyneth Paltrow part of it was that I, it just, what they were making is something I will never eat. Mm-hmm. They were made, which was yeah. funny why they made it. They made pepper pots. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. You know, pots full yeah. of pepper. Uh, but it was like, it was spicy and it's whatever it was. My wife and I were watching. But my wife, who doesn't ever give a shit about a lot of these spoilers or everything, too, when we were watching the moment, I didn't tell her about the Spider Man moment. And Gwyneth Paltrow goes, We were in Spider Man together. And this whole moment, my wife laughed. She goes, That's nice. Yeah, totally. But I, in defense, though, of that it's like you film so many of these movies that you don't know where it lands. And she doesn't, who says she has to be a fan she, of, of, yeah. of watching the movies? You but know? she shot probably it's for one day it. because it was that one scene at the end of Spider Man right. Homecoming. Mm-hmm. So she probably, probably just thought it was, it was for Avengers. Avengers. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, I, that, that, I that I one I didn't give too much of it. Um, but did she did she go to see herself in a movie? Like she was, was she probably at the premiere. At the, I don't know if she was the premiere for that one. She's in it. Yeah. For, she probably didn't even go to the premiere for it. If only <laughs> I know how you feel. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. The premiere of what? The Spider Man? Yeah. No, no, not for that one. I got it. This is totally not about Spider Man or anything like that. But last night I was watching television late at night. Okay, you got scared. Yes, Uh-oh. because they. Now. No, they were, what were you watching that one? Big Little Lies. Uh, I, I got home at midnight and just turned on the TV and fell asleep or something. I think it was just Sports Center, and they were advertising the Us DVD release. Uh-oh, so and that music started playing. It was late at night, and that movie scarred you. It, yes, this whole that whole thing really fucked me. How up. was your sleep that night? Not great. Is that true? Yes. Really? I'm t- not. I'm telling you. Do you think it's not true? I don't know. I don't know if he was exaggerating I, for the air for the bit. No, like I was very, very uncomfortable. I did not like how that person was in here. I did not like her behavior. <laughs> it did not. <laughs> she, actress. I know. I she was very like good her at her job. So you, very you did, good. You didn't like the behavior that she Wendy, was paid to do. Correct. Wendy told me that she talked to her afterwards. Did you guys hear this? Yes. Well, well someone talked about it. I think Roca talked about it on the air. Maybe you weren't here. Oh. Um, but he said that she was. Where was I? She, yeah, it was a Thursday show probably. Oh, where was I? How, how do I know? Uh, what are you doing? Where were you on Thursday? The show? Okay. On Thursday. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know. so she, uh, she she was apparently very concerned for you. She oh. Said, she didn't know if it was real or not. Really? And then they told her real. She was like laughing, but she was still, she felt uh, she felt bad. And she's stuck around here for way too long. Like, get out. I don't know. I know. No, that's a different movie. This is us. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, right. Give Roxy, it to me. With Roxy with a That's comeback. Good. Yeah. With a comeback. Oh, yeah. That was good. Yeah. But yeah, and like, like that music played in that. <sighs> what was that? What was the something that um, I didn't read the whole report. I saw it came out, but Jordan Peele said something along the lines that Josh he, is a real wimp. Yes, yeah. but he debunked some theory that was going on for us. Did you see this? No, yeah, it was, came out this morning. That. I don't know. I just saw it popping around. Let me around. find it. Sure. Here, let me look. Yeah, it's just like de- Twitter. Yeah, uh, t- probably right. Just jo- I can't just put in Jordan Peele debunks theory. Um, there you go. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Jordan Peele debunk, debunks? Debunks. Debunks. Fan theories from the movie. It's just a from long... From Hot New Hip Hop. I don't know. You have to read it because it's just too long of an article to, mm. to breeze through. Anyway, I just saw okay. that, that particular article. It's not even that long. I mean, you've got to imagine that <clears throat> Rebecca M. Ford saw the video of this Isn't and it? is like, why no. is she not going to come on why the show? Why do you think no. she saw it? Because it was the biggest follow- thing on the internet. You, well. That day. Is, is, yeah, that day for, until <laughs> it wasn't. Uh, anyway, for like twenty minutes. Do you guys think you've ever been the biggest thing on the internet? No. On the internet, no. Not for one single solitary second. No. On the internet, yeah. No. There's, a, there's bigger things. Do you in, think you will be space. one day in life? God, I hope not. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> I sure hope not. Yeah. What What else is going on? Yeah. Uh, we have Mark Hamill talking uh, at the Child's Play yeah. uh, remake. I know. It's, did you hear about this news? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, 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 so what? He says he's, he, he hopes he's, he's done. He hopes he's done like, after. So he thinks it stinks. It's like this, he, yeah. He just this became be a thing. He's, because he, the other thing is, look, he – but the, the big thing that it, that it came was it basically he confirmed the Force Ghost thing. Yeah. That's, you, that's the biggest thing. You guys are not talking about Child's Play anymore. You're talking about Star Wars. He has, he has a they asked about Star Wars. Star Wars. Okay. So what was it? So he basically said, I can't wait to be done I with I love how with... she likes to get assurance from Makuka. See, this is what I'm talking about. Who gives a shit? Let's move on. He I said he's hoping to be Makuka. done. He wants to retire the Jedi robes, you know, after Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. And and then he confirmed basically that he's going to be a Force ghost in uh, Rise of Skywalker. Okay. Yeah. There's and then your he news. hopes he's done. Thanks, Rox. Yeah. yeah. I'll be honest. <clears throat> I, I didn't know. I totally forgot that he, like, died. <laughs> and, spoiler. <laughs> yeah. Why did you do the quote, torture yourself? No, like, I, I, I don't think, like... Well, you didn't really die. 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 But isn't this a weird thing to Backwards, do? Backwards, yeah. yeah. Us fucked him up. Yeah, um, <laughs> it really, really... Did. Can you imagine if somebody was like, he died? <laughs> it's just the Force Ghost part of it. Yeah, I, they are supposed to go like this, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it the Force like Ghost weird... part of it. That's the, he confirmed the Force Ghost thing. Yeah, yeah but I, I think if he wasn't a Force Ghost... Everyone knew it. Yeah. Everybody knew it already, but he just kind of confirmed it, and he just said he doesn't want it. He you didn't know, lie. No, and, and that's the important part. Exactly Does Mark right. Hamill play like old Chucky? And he's Chucky? the voice. No, of Chucky. he is Chucky. He's the voice of Chucky. Oh, yeah. old like Chucky. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. the doll. <laughs> they just aged Chucky. Yeah, yeah, Chucky's on an island somewhere. But, when they yeah. nobody's going to think about this after they announce what the because if yeah. if you think um, like as we do that the Ben Affleck and Weiss movies will be so far back into the past, no one's even going to think about. Skywalker coming back because it's yeah. not going to be relevant. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. It's just the fact because he's just been vocal in the past about certain things and changes. So he's you know, a good troll. Yeah, he, he does things. He, he does. He, th- he does things in a way that he likes to yeah, troll people. I, sure. I do enjoy it. Yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, what else? 
We have the box office report, and Toy Story 4 is the highest uh, gross scene in the series. It yeah. opened with 118 million, 118 Whoa. million. It's the the best of the franchise, but it was well under expectations from Disney. Really? Uh, Disney thought it was uh, going to open between 140 and 165 mm. million. Wow! And it only opened at 118 million. Only. So, Remember yeah. when 115 was well, somebody, think somebody that. did yeah. somebody did send a tweet out uh, I don't know who it is and it doesn't really matter because yeah. it's just Twitter right. and everybody started arguing about it but he's like yeah it's obvious that there's franchise fatigue it was projected 140 between 165 and yeah, 100. it only opened 118 everybody's not seeing this now and people were like <laughs> what are you talking about everybody went and saw who it it's that? the highest I, I don't know who it was I just I, I go down these rabbit holes on Twitter I just I just watch because right. Everybody starts yelling at this guy because I thought it was a valid point when you're considering like, hey, as we keep moving forward and there's all these franchises and Men in Black International did this and that he was comparing those things. But with Toy Story, this thing crushed. And right. it's Right. Yeah. Um, what's the uh, what's the what's the worldwide number on it? Uh I don't think did it go internationally? No, yeah. Let's yeah. let's look at uh yeah, box office mojo. They're pulling it up. I uh and you have you all seen it? Two forty one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it. It's good. Two forty one. Um, you want to see it? No, I will see. I love the Toy yeah. Stories movie. It's, it's really good. good. Yeah, it made two hundred forty one million so far worldwide. Did you just hear that? Well, was you it? didn't hear me. I like burped inside. I was really proud of myself. Nice. Well, you we oh. didn't hear it. You didn't? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> we missed it. Yeah, that was hey, you, appropriate. It, it, it felt like a hiccup burp. Huh. I went. A burp cup? I tried to go in the mic because Christian does it, but nice. you guys didn't even hear. Mm. <laughs> you can add it to your special skills part on the resume. Right. The noise that you just made, Christian, is like the definition of the word meh. He was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if Monday. I can do it again. I need to show I think you, we're good. I need to show you something, though, that, that after I'll show you during the break. So, okay. like I said, the, my... my uh, my seven-year-old is obsessed with the Aladdin uh -huh. stuff, right? So she plays the soundtrack, both soundtracks, the live action. Speechless and the over one. and over? All, every song oh, over and over again. Every song over and over again, right? But now the, 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 the I say almost two-year-old that I have does everything that the seven-year-old does, chasing around the house, singing the songs, pretending yeah. that she's a, a boo. And so, I'm yeah. I walk into, and I have my camera, because this time I want to see it, and Arabian Nights is playing the song of Arabian Nights. So the two-year-old, Puts her arms back and goes, I am ah! <laughs> screaming at her face and then runs. Yeah. And just takes off and runs. And I was like, it's great. Okay. But she's like, she's picking this up already. I don't even too. She's singing along to these songs and dancing around. I was like, you know, look, if that's if that's where I can get some kind of peace to where you want to scream Arabian nights yeah. at the top of your lungs and then I can just chill out on the couch for a second, it works for me. I don't I the amount of musical like music that goes on your house, I would just walk out in the middle of Westwood Boulevard and just and take me, and you'd be done. I'm done. You think though, so, but you come back to me once you guys have kids and you need a way, you need a babysitter. And Spotify becomes your babysitter. Yeah. So okay. you, you're you're gonna change your tune. Yeah. I'm just sure. like you're gonna change your tune, like you're never gonna get married. I was asked <laughs> to be a, a birth Abdullah. Are you kidding? No. You what? can't do that. Yeah, can't that is called a birth of doula this week. I think it's just called a doula. No, it's a called doula. a doula. Oh, I'm adding a B? Yeah. yeah. I think you're, you're turning your name Abdul. Abdul. Paula Abdul. So we're going to make, make a big list of why you shouldn't do that. That's number one because you don't know what it <laughs> okay. is. Well, I was sent a text message saying, will you be my my birth a doula or whatever it is. Is this someone and, who doesn't know who you no, are? No, he yeah. knows me very well. We're oh. very close. Always have been. Uh, birth, birth doula. Yeah. Is that what I said? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. there's no Adula. Just no, it's birth just doula. doula. Does he want his child to be dropped? Yeah. Well, it's, I don't really know what it entails. He said. He you, said you deliver the baby. Basically. No, 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 no. no. no he just really, said that hospital it helps with the baby. Uh, it helps will you be my birth doula? They said the partner should have someone to call if I need support. So That's I think not what a doula is. Oh, doula is, 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 has a lot. Like they're like professional. Yeah, doulas right. Isn't that the like when you have the prep? It's the prep. No, but that's what the hospital's calling it. The well, then you shouldn't do doula. it. You don't. Oh. You. <laughs> you have said on the show multiple times how scared you are of kids. Yeah, but it's not my kid. It's prepping. You're going to prep somebody on how to ha give yeah. birth. On how to like do no, birth. This is, this is the guy. You're going to be his doula. Yeah, I'm his doula. So what? Uh, you just I hang just, out with them and shoot the shit? You've, you've confused me many times <laughs> in this show, but this <laughs> is this is the champion. He texted me yeah, yesterday. Will you be my birth doula? I said I'd be honored. He's fucking with you. No way. Did you respond without even knowing what a doula does? Yeah. You were right. just calling it a, a doula. Right. You just want to be a doula. <laughs> and because you like the name. Yeah. No, no. He said it. I said, yeah, of course. 
And okay, here's the definition and of doula. Without, do you have no. Do you have to go to a class for a doula? A woman typ- typically mm. without formal obstetric training okay. who is employed to provide guidance and support to a pregnant woman during labor. Now here's here's oh, let, me, is... let, me, let me break this down. <laughs> here's the part that you fit into. Okay, a woman typically without formal obstetric training. Okay, <laughs> here is here is the part you do not fit into. Who is employed to provide guidance and support to pregnant women during labor? Well, it's not to the. It's to I think I'm support for the husband. But like what I'm guessing. No, that that's no, not a thing. Well, that's what he said. So is there a different word then that you use? Because <laughs> he said it. He said, "Will you be my doula?" Uh, I'm honored. Say, put doula for for <laughs> for husband. Yeah. Put doula husband, for husband. Doula. Is it a gay couple that's having? No. A, no. Straight. Husband doula. Straight. Husband the doula. If I was to repair your husband, no. He, husband can be the doula. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I'm the doula. To, doula for doula a husband. To the husband. That's, that is not In a birth, thing. Birth, birth doula. No, Unless they're just creating a husband doula not, so he can have you in the, the labor room as a friend. That's not. That's the only thing. Is this his first kid? Yeah, that's probably why. He, probably he has reading, no idea. What's he's happening. probably reading something. You know, oh, I need a doula. I need someone well, to prep pre- me. The hospital said they need the doula. That's just a friend a, a doula, at the hospital. That's yeah. me. Yeah, a doula. The hospital, I'm gonna be great. I don't think he knows. They, he knows what it is. I'm falling asleep. If, now. if the hospital said that they, <laughs> that, if the hospital said that they need a doula, a doula is someone that helps the wife. It has nothing to do with him. No. What am I gonna do? Don't Love. do it. No, nothing. If you, if you're real friends with these people, you say no. Yeah. <laughs> I already said yes, so. Fine, guys. I won't have Roxy do it. <laughs> <laughs> you said like, well yeah, Cody, have you, have, okay. has there been thoughts of a doula for you no. or your wife? No. no. I've done a lot of research. And I didn't even know what the hell you guys were talking about. Well, done and well done. because have you gone – are you doing the classes? Uh, yeah. we, we are starting them soon. Okay. When you go to the class, you will learn what a doula – They the, just did you know the what, class. You know what is the sad thing, Cody? The fact that the first time you learn about a doula is through this stupid story. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you're going to – Did you have one? Uh, no, we didn't have one, but we, but we got very extensive knowledge into what it was. It what was happened. offered. You wouldn't let me be your doula? No. You would not be my doula. You would be my <laughs> wife. So my wife – No, but I wouldn't be her doula. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we, we, we have yeah. to move on. Please. Uh, what's next? I'm a birthing doula genius. <laughs> you are not. <laughs> that is the <laughs> farthest thing that you are. Yeah. There is um, not one. You know what's great about this new studio? This. Is you can't kick my wire anymore. Yeah, yeah but you know, know what's not great do. about it that I'm learning? Right. I do this thing with my pants where I put my hands in them, not like the top part of my pants, but the holes. And you usually can't see that. But now you can because and it's I table. Th- I think so. Can yeah. you guys see that? It's uh, mostly covered by the lower third. Oh, yeah. cool, cool. Mm-hmm. It's fantastic. Your hands and your, 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 like, your doula pants. It's like gold radio. All right, what's next? <laughs> Did you see the new TV spot for The Lion King? We finally get Beyonce the singing. singing. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was I mean, good. You, well, you get, you, I mean, that's what you get when you hire Beyonce and, to do it. And yeah. Donald Glover, man. And Donald Glover. I don't think he's getting enough credit because all I'm seeing for this is Beyonce Slay and the Beehive is coming full point right now. But I'm I think sure Donald Glover is. is so good as well. They're, yeah. they're excellent together. I'm looking forward. I, I actually just listened to a little bit of it, so that's exactly what I thought was, it was going to sound like. Can't wait for the movie. Yeah. I, I just miss Destiny's Child. I've never been like a big Beyonce fan. You're Destiny's Destiny Child guy, huh? Yeah. Yeah. You see him in concert, didn't you? Yeah. Did you really? I saw him in concert. Kidding around. It was great. All right. They were fantastic. Yeah. I've, I, like I've said on the show before, I've been very lucky to see a lot of concerts. And the Destiny's Child was great. I went with my high school girlfriend. It was fantastic. Yeah. What was her name? Devin. Would you say that this is fact? Cool name, Dev. Mm-hmm. Fact or fiction? Yeah. Orange looks better on you when you have a tan. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Fact. Why? Because yeah. I'm, t- I'm tannish right now. None of you guys followed the instructions. Yeah. You said say fact or fiction. Fact. Fact. There sure. we go. Mm-hmm. Okay, I would say so too. Yeah, definitely. But still though, see, Christian, even with, I told them to follow fact, your instructions. Like Do you hear that? Even with that fact, <laughs> I still wouldn't let Roxy be a doula. I was correct. Fact no. or fiction? You a don't male know needs that. a doula. No. Orange is a good color when you're not giving away the color of the uh, of the, the gender pr- of the child. Or when you're in prison. All right, what's what? that? What? Found the doula thing? No, I'm, I, I don't want to talk about the doula what thing is it? anymore. Um, it's uh, <laughs> Riley's really feeling it today. I know how I feel. Right. Yeah. You guys make me f- make me feel bad. Uh, you know what? We're, we're give, this, this is tough love. Yeah, yeah. Go nowhere near. It's this. just fine. Um, yeah. The, the, uh, the soundtrack. Uh, Staying on the Lion King. The soundtrack uh-huh. listing was just revealed. Remember, at one point we heard that "Be Prepared" was not going to be a part of this. Yes. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's must, a part maybe, of it. I wonder if they added it. And yeah. it's performed by she would tell, tell Edgeford. Edgeford. Oh, that's awesome. What about what about the uh, just morning to say his report? Name correctly. Yeah. Uh, the morning report, the, which Let's is from see. the play. From yes. the play. Yeah. Give me, I'm yeah, give me a list. Okay. Give so list. the Start list the is list. Okay. Circle of Life. Yes. Boom. Life's not fair. Hans Zimmer. Is that Rafiki's oh, okay. Fireflies? Hans Zimmer. I just can't wait to be king. Boom. Elephant Graveyard. Sick. Be prepared. Stampede. <laughs> Scar takes the throne. Boom. Hakuna Matata. Hey. 
Simba is alive. Yes. The lion sleeps tonight. Boom. A wemo up. Can you feel about Billy tonight? Eichner and Seth Rogen? Oh my God! Reflections I feel of like I'm have a heart attack. <laughs> reflections of Mufasa, TBA, TBA on the track listing. Bat- <laughs> to be announced. Come on, I got it. Yeah. Uh, Battle for Pride Rock. Remember, <laughs> never too late. <laughs> he lives in you, which is the greatest. And, oh, you and uh, you just ruined the new table. Old studio. No, that's fine. Oh. And uh, and uh, Mamboop. M- Mamboop. 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 It says M B U B E. Mabuba. Mabube. Sounds good. It's the doula uh, of the soundtrack. Isn't that the song that he does when he's doing the little dance? Yeah. Mabube. Thanks, Roxy. I, I Here, watched. Just fold it up. I Here, watched good. last night. The, what, the, the Lion King? Yes. The animated? Yes. Well, obviously. Um, you're hoping that the Lion King music takes over the Aladdin music in your house, I would imagine. I, it will. Well, no. Right now, Mary Poppins took over. Mary Poppins Returns. Oh. So she got obsessed with Such that. a good movie. That is the worst soundtrack. I, yep. I actually really like it. I think you is Emily Blunt singing on it? Yeah. yeah. Really? Oh, I, She's I, great. I, like I think these two are... I just didn't like it. Mm. Um, okay. I will never see the movies. No. Somebody compliment me right now. No, no. You, you don't deserve it today. Oh, Jesus, what's, Roxy? what's next? What's going on? It's going to be a what's no a sound for bite? me, dog. Oh. No for me, doula. Boom. I like it. Um, <laughs> all right, what's next is the last bit of news. Ron Howard is going to be directing an animated movie. This will be his first uh, animated movie to direct. If you don't count uh, The Grinch, which really wasn't animated, but it feel, felt like a it yeah. live action. I always forget that he directed that. Yeah. Totally. Did you like that? It's like the, nah. Yeah, I like right? I like the remake. That well, it wasn't really a remake. It was pretty much the same exact movie. The one that this that this came out. It was yeah. fine. It was fine. It just this, it was it's just a different. It's like the updated animated style. Mm-hmm. That did plays your, into did it. your kids like it? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. my oldest did, but the youngest didn't get a chance. Too to young. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, she's she's obsessed with Winnie the Pooh. That's that's oh you, you oh my god I learned something really the hard way yesterday. You didn't know it. No. no. So. I know that you. Like we usually give my we'll give my daughter like a half an hour, whether it's Sesame Street or whatever it is. And she's sitting there. She sits on her little chair and she sits like the freaking emperor, right? You don't you don't mess with her. So I'm like, that's fine. Time. So my my oldest puts on the Winnie the Pooh for her, but she put on an hour for her. I'm like, which I'm not gonna give her the full hour. I'm just gonna give her the the, the half an hour. So I looked. It's a push push pause. So I know how long it is. It was half. It was 32 minutes. I'm like, right, that's it. I I hit off and I hear this. No, 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 and I'm like. What <laughs> the hell is going on? My wife goes, what are you doing? And I go, it's over a half an hour. She's like, how long is it? She, I go, an hour. She's like, then you put on that hour. <laughs> no! No! And I'm like, oh, my God. It, it was... <laughs> it was it was like she was, obs- it was she got possessed oh, and I, that's I great. Could, it was the craziest mm. thing like just sitting on that no! she was about to prison shank you but, uh, when, and she's the most peaceful just quiet little thing so like when that <laughs> don't mess don't with fuck poo. with poo <laughs> Oh, that was it. Oh, in more ways than that. All right, listen, we're gonna uh, we're gonna go to break here in just a second. So I wanted to uh, th- I thank Makuga and uh, and Riley because they're gonna yeah. they're gonna yeah. dip out. We're gonna talk to um, Sean Waltman, aka X Pac, in uh, in after the break. I'm very excited. To, I don't to think do he's it. here yet, but well, we'll go to break okay. and hopefully he's here. And if not, Riley can walk him in. Yeah. Uh, First Blood. Why are you playing that? Is there some news or something? Nah, just felt like it. Okay, that's fair. That's great. Hey, David David Morell wrote it. Jerry Goldsmith did the music. Yes, he did. Um, anyway, so, and the other thing, though, too, and Roxy, we've probably talked about this maybe tomorrow. Marvel hasn't announced that Hall H um, panel yet. I think it's going to be on Saturday at 5. I think. Yeah. Why do you think yeah. that? Because yeah. it's usually when it they usually are. Is. I might have to. No. Um, I might have to call it. Can't you make it a little later? The, the event? We have it booked out for this thing. It's like, we're, we're going to see. Once I can announce the main event and to see if the, if. It's with Marvel announcing their slate. I'm gonna be in trouble, but we'll have, we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, anyway, all right, we're gonna go to break. When we get back, uh, hopefully, we have Sean Waltman in here, and we can uh, talk for a little bit. Yep. Thanks everybody for throwing your headphones off directly into the microphones. Appreciate that. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about Rule of Two. You looking for a Star Wars fix? Well, Rule of Two is that show. It drops it on Collider Video's main YouTube channel, as well as on Podcast One's Jedi Council feed. So go over there, subscribe, share it with your friends. It's hosted by myself and Mark Fernandez. We talk everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of deep dives and a lot of conversations that go all in. You know what to do. Subscribe, join us there, and rise. 
Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Mailbag. A new episode drops every Saturday and Sunday in your face and in your ears, answering the questions from you fans about the world of entertainment, film, and television. Me and great guests from our sphere do the best to answer your questions from Twitter, from Instagram, and of course, email as well, every Saturday and Sunday. Hi, I'm Koi Jandro, host of Collider Heroes, and I'm here to tell you we've got 20-minute episodes coming at you on Collider Video, on the YouTube, as you've always loved it. Plus, now we've got hour-long podcasts dropping every Thursday, so make sure to subscribe to the podcast because it's going to get even more sweaty on the podcast. Plus, every week we're going to try to get some very special guest interviews, all of the people that help shape these movies and TV shows you love. So, video, podcast, interviews all coming at you. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much, guys. Stay sweaty. Hey guys, Perry Nemirov here to let you know that The Witching Hour is all over Collider right now. You can listen to that horror film podcast with myself, with Haley Fouch. We talk about witchiness, we talk about slashers, we talk about space horror, you name it, all on that show on the Collider Factory feed. We also have clips on the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. And on top of that, you can find an article all about Witching Hour every single Tuesday on Collider.com. Check it out, get scared. Hopefully you survive the witching hour. What's up Collider fans? Ryan Satin here from ProWrestlingSheet.com where you can find the top stories throughout the week in the world of professional wrestling. If you're a wrestling fan like myself, then you'd be doing yourself a disservice by not checking out all the shows we do every week on YouTube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. In particular, on Wednesdays, we've got a SmackDown recap show hosted by John Roca and myself where we pick apart and, and talk about every little thing that happened on the blue brand. So do yourself a favor and go subscribe at youtube.com slash C slash wrestling sheet. Hey guys, Perry here to let you know about the new edition of Collider Movie Talk. We are going to five days a week. We have a short, sweet 20 minute show where we focus on the two biggest stories of the day. You can expect to see all of your favorite Collider personalities on the show, including Jeff Snyder, John Roca, Haley Fouch. You're getting Josh McCuga every Friday. We are gonna have a blast. It's gonna be informative, fun, come join us. 3 p.m. PT live every single day of the week right here on the Collider Video YouTube channel. You can also find the show on the Collider Movie Talk feed on our podcast network. So go watch, go listen, however you prefer to get all of your movie news. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Sports Time. Well, you know, if you've been watching us every week, you know we break down the latest and the greatest in the world of sports, talk about the big issues, the big games, all of it with a rotating band of guests like Matt Nose and Josh McCuga. We've had Taylor Bashotti on. We've had so many great guests. Now, if you want to see more of Sports Time or you want to try it out for the first time, remember to subscribe to Collider Sports YouTube channel. And if you want to take us along with you in your ears, you can go and subscribe to the Collider Sports podcast feed for all the sports goodness. Hey guys, it's Riley here. Let me tell you about the Riley Roundtable. You know it, right? It drops every Thursday on Collider Conversations, and I have guests from all across the space. John Roca, Gray Drake, Alexander Desplat came on at one point. We talk everything from movies, we talk about life, and everything in between. What do you want to hear? What do you want to talk about? It's the Riley Roundtable every Thursday on Collider Conversations. You get it there. Hello, how are you guys doing? I'm Christian Harloff. I'm the host of Collider Jedi Council. We talk about everything Star Wars. And if you want to catch our weekly show where we talk about the latest and greatest in Star Wars, it's movie news, it's canon, it's all of it. We take questions from you guys. How do you do it? Main channel, that's right, right here. Subscribe to this channel and you can listen, you can watch, you can do all of it. But if you want to just listen to it, you got the podcast feed too. Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever it is, you can listen to it in your car. Do all of it. It's Star Wars. Episode 9 is coming out. And then after episode nine you got tv shows so we're gonna be your sports center for star wars do it come on be real ladies and gentlemen we're back here on collider live and uh it's funny joining us back in studio now as i was telling roxy it's been almost 20 years long time since uh, you and i have yes. uh, been in the same room together yeah. uh, Two decades. Sean, it's been crazy yeah. sean wallman aka 2002 maybe 2001 One? yeah 2001 yeah. was when i was there and, it was, and we were i couldn't remember the damn where where the hell we were but i was telling the story yeah. it, was, it was me you and regal and uh and we were it was a house show and we were coming and you guys i just started working there you guys are very kind you're like hey, what are you doing right now and i was like yeah nothing's gonna hang at the hotel like, come to the come to the show with us I'm like, all right, cool. So you, I think you, you were driving. We were, we were going wherever the hell we were going. And, uh, and we were just driving. It was, it was like probably an hour to where we were. And, and roll up, we pull up a joint. And you're just like, 
It you was were, you. It was me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were trying to figure out the right <laughs> to smoke the joint with? <laughs> what do you mean it was you? Well, Did you I think had, it was somebody else? Do you know I got heat over that? You know what's funny about this? So, okay. So I did too. So and so this is what happened. <laughs> so I want to hear. I definitely want to hear his side of the story. Twenty so, years oh, later. Oh yeah, no, it's yeah. a good story actually. Uh, okay, I want to hear it. So you're so you're driving. You say to me, you go, um, you, you're like, hey, do you do you smoke? I was like, yeah, I'll, for sure. And you're like, I, I knew you were cool. So you you, you, you hand it back to me, stoned that in my face. I wasn't working. I was just, you were in the back seat. I was in the back seat. Yeah, that's right. And, oh, thank and you, Ryan. Thank you. yeah, thanks, brother. So um, then we get to the thing. You're, you know, you're, you're doing, you're doing your thing, and I walk in. I don't remember who the referee was, but whoever it was, I walk in, and I'm, I'm, I'm blitzed. I couldn't even talk, right? And he says something to me, and I probably definitely. He's like, we oh, were in, L- we were in California, right? I, yeah, I think we were. Absolutely. I think we were yeah. like San Jose or yeah, something, San right? Jose, yeah, that's exactly. right. That's exactly right. So, how do you both remember this? Because it was like after a big pay per view, or it was right after SummerSlam. It was right after SummerSlam, and it was, and we were, we were traveling. So we get there, and then Stephanie called me in the next day, and she's like, "Look." Um, you like you're here to write. You can't be friends with the wrestler, and and she's like, and you're. I guess she didn't really insinuate that I was stoned, but I, the referee yeah. ratted me out. Mm. How did you get hit for that? Well, because it was just a thing to. Um, um, and I tried. I, so, anyways, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. I don't. I'm not sure what the whole point was, except yeah. for maybe just to put me in my place because every now and again I would get a little yeah. bit. But how do they know? How do they know that that I got that I got stoned with you? Did the referee probably tell them too? S- yeah. Steph Snitch, said snitches. you stooge me off. What? Ha- what? Steph happened? said you stooge me off, Christian. One hundred percent. not. Is that? That's what. That's. She it said, doesn't. I, well, here's the thing. Bullshit. Bullshit. It shouldn't have mattered. Yeah. It shouldn't have mattered. They okay. knew. Uh, it was a huge pothead. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and it was just a thing. It, okay. It's not a big deal. Yeah, but it's bullshit. Okay. It's bu- I can tell you, I, that's not me. That's bullshit. So, um, yeah. So, wow. I was like, try, I was made to feel like a piece of shit yeah. because, um, you know, Regal was kind of in like recovery. Yeah, and, like, yeah, but yeah. he's fine. Like, he wasn't. Like he didn't give a fuck about pot. It wasn't his right, thing. Right, right, right. And so, no, he didn't. Um, he wasn't. It was just me and you. Yeah, but no, they brought Regal in. They brought me in. It was Steph. It was Jr. And it was just. It wasn't really a big deal. Get but, out of here. Yeah, yeah, dude. I'm sorry that went down like that. Don't I, worry. Yeah, Wait, but there were only three of you guys in the and, car. And, so oh yeah, yeah. Well, and it was when I'm telling you when I showed up that it, it was it, whoever that referee was. That's the guy. I'm so, telling you right now, that's the guy. Oh yeah, they knew. Yeah, yeah. They Cause, they, cause they knew I, you got out of the car with me. So I got talked to about it, like to where too. Then out. That's so crazy. anyway, yeah. Jr. and their stuff, and like you know, it's not very nice. Like I can't, I don't want to like. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to try to paraphrase, but it was like, you know, that's not very cool for you to like, you know, expose William Regal to to oh, this pot when he and like he don't. Give, this used to be a fun a story fuck. for me. Now it sucks. <laughs> no, don't. No, no, it's fun. <laughs> I just was like, later, I couldn't believe. St- I couldn't believe. St- like yeah. step. And, and and they were raking me over the coals like it's like they knew I was a pothead. Ste- like, right. Yeah, because that whole... the time when we you know when we did the run DMC, I didn't mean to make you feel bad about no, this. No, I, I do. I, but I do. Don't. I do. You know what? I feel bad about it because it was also because that's that's not me. Like I was I was excited to get I, first of all hang out with you guys. So we went to a diner afterwards yeah. and hung out too. No, it was a nice drive. Yeah, yeah man. And fun. then I got and then I got called in. I got called yeah. in for a couple of different things while I was there, but that was that was one of them. And I was like, oh okay. And then the fact that they said that I pinched, I can tell you right now. Don't worry, it was easy for them to say that. Horse piss. Uh, yeah. It's easy because you're yeah. not there anymore. Right. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. That's fair. So um, no, but I it was like stuff. And I pulled her aside afterwards. I'm like, fuck, like, you know, that hurt. Like, yeah. that pulled me, like, and did that to me in front of Regal. And, like, you know, made right, me feel right, like a right. piece of shit. I'm like, Steph, like, oh my God. we did this, um, we did this uh, video shoot for when Run DMC did a remake of our DX yeah, song. Yeah. And we were, like, at scores and everything. And, like, Road Dog and I even had, and, like, Steph's right there. Everyone's there. Right. We even had him pull the fucking limo over so we could step outside and smoke a joint. Right. I'm like, well, what the that, fuck? You know what's funny about that, though? Isn't that the transition of, if you look at it between, like, let's say, for obviously the classic uh, days back in the 80s, but then what, what you guys yeah. were part of with the Attitude Era and all that, and then they went to, like, this. maybe that was, like, the transition of where they were going through this kind of PG thing that they're in now, right? That was... Honestly, it was just because every now and again I would like, 
I would act like a brat. I was a yeah. spoiled fucking brat around there. You know, I had a little bit of uh, clout, and right. you know, occasionally I would use it, and not always for you know. It was sometimes a dick. Right. You, I mean, you. So it's just a way to put me in my place. Yeah, that's all. Okay, but that's yeah. all. And I was gonna apologize to you because I saw. Um, um, because at first, then I thought I was, I thought I might have been mistaken. Because yeah. do you know who Tommy Block is? He, he works with Will Sasso. Mm, no. He wrote around okay. that time, too. And I was like, well, maybe it was him. I, so I couldn't remember. But it was definitely it was. because of that San Jose drop. It was drop. definitely it was that, that San Jose. Well, that's me. That's de- yes. <laughs> that's definitely but me. But I believe you yeah. didn't stooge me off, Christian. I, that, that's 100%. You know me. I'm, not, I'm definitely yeah. not. You didn't have to. Dude, Why you would out, you do that? Yeah. You get out of a car no. with me. Yeah. And, and everyone knows. And everyone knows it. Yeah, yeah. that was the main, that was the main thing because I, I just remember us going because it was such a cool it was just, it, you know for me because I so my story was and I've told it a billion times but just so so you know is that I was I was a big I was a big wrestling guy that was my yeah. that was my thing and when I and I moved from Florida to, like, from New York but I moved to Florida then went to uh, L A. Drove to WrestleMania 17. Saw yeah. saw Paul Heyman out there, and I and I 17 in Houston. Yeah, it was in Houston. Yeah. and I drove there, and I and I went up to Paul, and I basically said to him, "Look, everybody asks you how to become a a, a wrestler. How do you become a writer?" And he goes, "Write a write a letter." So I wrote the letter, and I wrote that. I wrote a bunch, and I, I got Stephanie's email. I got everybody's, and I just wrote it. And they, yeah. they flew me out, and I and I got the gig. But I was. 22. So when I get there, the first person I see when I walk in at 22, and this is 2001, is Stone Cold. So I'm, you know, I'm marking out. I'm like, yeah. oh shit, you know, that's Stone Cold. But I realize I got to, you got to separate. I don't have what I have now to where you got to. That's that you're working. That's the guy. So when fucking X Pac and, and Regal say, hey, you want to go do this? You want to smoke? A, fuck yeah, I want to smoke yeah. a joint with X Pac. That's a great story. <laughs> yeah. And the last thing that 22 year old kid is gonna do is go, hey, Stephanie, I smoked a joint with X Pac. I'm sorry, I was bad influence on you. And if I, if I was I already had smoking pot, to do, dude, it wasn't you. That's fine. <laughs> you might not have been smoking any on the way to the building. That's fine well, for me. But uh, but I wasn't working though. Okay. I also wasn't working that day. Oh, okay. So you know what I mean? I was there, so that yeah. was the early days of like ri- the writing team era yes. of WWE. Yeah, because everyone Taught me that, and we were, I was going to bring this up to you because you know these, these interviews going around with Moxley yeah. and 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 whether it was on Jericho or the I heard all. you guys talking about it by the way. Yeah. Or, like I even hit rocks up. I was like, I know. didn't say that you did that though. Oh. I don't know what, what you want to be said or not about the interview. Yeah. Oh. yeah. yeah. Well, well, my my thought process was it too because yeah. that was the time right because they would fly in guys like myself, the LA writers. And I realized quick they recycle them in and out because they want to get certain ideas. But it's the it's the core group. You know, it was Bruce and all this guy and like yeah. Michael P.S. Hayes. And those are the guys. That's the that's who they're going to listen to because that's that's the family. That's the team, and they bring in guys like me. And what do you what do you got? Okay, great. Now we bring in the next one, and they continue to do that all the way through because Koski's still there, which is crazy. Yeah, Koski right? yeah. was, no. was there when I was there. I didn't I didn't realize that until I heard Moxley's interview about it. But do you? I mean, because you're I know you still you still do a lot with them. So as far as oh, yeah. The, t- the, t- the team, like, what do you think about the response to Moxie? The fact that there's, there's too much with the writing, there's too much with producing, and that guys, like, because when I was there, they would do a mixture of that. It would be like, all right, Sean, you're going to go out there, we need you to hit these points, yeah. but do, do what you do also and kind of go off. I mean, I hear different things, Chris, because, uh, you know, I was on my show. Uh, so, anyways, I was down in, uh, for the last two weeks, I was just down in uh, Orlando at the Performance Center, uh, you know, teaching. Uh, yeah. NXT people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, you know, I still have my show to do. So I had Road Dog just come in. You know, we went to the voiceover room and Skyped in. That's and, all. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so, like, I can only ask is as much as I might like to think that I know what's going on there on a day to day basis, you know, with that kind of thing. Right. You know, I. <laughs> Different people have different experiences there. You know, some people, they're told, hey, stick to the script. Right. You know, and then there are people that there's some trust there, uh, you know, as far as, you know, they can go out there and carry a, a promo on them. Yeah. They're good at that. And I think, you know, so I hear some people say, oh, no, they're giving a bit of freedom. And then others say they're not. It just depends on, I guess, the level yeah. of talent also, yeah. too, which would make sense. It's just because, you know, with uh, and you were involved a lot back in the day. Sorry. That's all good. That's all good. You were, you were involved back in the day with the. Um, with WCW and and, and the, the whole war and everything that was going on back then, and people obviously right now bringing up whether it's AEW because even when TNA was coming out, people go, oh TNA is going to be the thing, right? Is AEW? Do you think like is AEW? That's, that's 
the way that I look at it, I look at it very similar to like if you're a wrestling fan, there's Marvel, there's DC, and yeah. you shouldn't be on either side. It's like you're a wrestling fan. You want both to, to, yes. to flourish, right? Yeah. So is that kind of where you guys are on that mindset too? Like you're rooting for those guys as well because you, it's, it's competition. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure the, t- the talent yeah. are all rooting for that to succeed. Right. I think it's safe to say that. Yeah. I don't think I would get any heat for saying such a thing. Okay, it makes sense. It makes <laughs> sense. For... I, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I get it. Yeah. Chris, uh, I'm still I'm getting just... you in trouble 20 years later. I know, I know. Right? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I wasn't really in trouble. Right. Yeah. That was the whole fucked up thing about that. Right. It was, well, like, it was never going to be in trouble over that. Yeah. You, yeah. So but, when did you and Hunter, because you and Hunter have been friends for such a long time, like, yeah. and did you guys become friends when I mean, during that whole, because the, the big story for those of you who don't know that I, obviously a lot of people the, your big break is when you, you be, as a one two three kid you beat Razor Ramon uh, in that in that exciting match you're yeah. like who is this kid right and he does it yeah. and and that kind of takes you up is that at that point were you already friends with Hunter or is it, no, no you weren't no okay. he came in and I didn't know him until he until he was hired and he came in and so um, yeah uh, you know as far as the click goes he's yeah. the only one that's closer to me in age he's still a couple years older than right, me right, but right. you know right because it was, it was Kevin Nash and, yeah. and Sean and which is uh, you can, you still keep up with all yeah. those guys right oh for sure yeah. all the time yeah well, like fuck yeah we yeah, do you're really good oh, buddies, yeah. Yeah. you would sure. say they're your best friends still? yeah absolutely yeah. 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 Um, and, and Road Dogs in there right. on that too uh, but anyway what the fuck was I saying no we, well, we were just talking about Triple H and how you yeah. met and you, you came so in. Yeah. um and also, I had a lot of his first matches with him there. Like, his first match ever at the Garden was with me. Oh, that's cool. That's a cool yeah. moment. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. it was a hell of a match, yeah, too. Yeah. yeah. And that was cool. So you guys, I mean, you guys have so many special memories and everything, too. And even the, the, the anniversary to see you guys all kind of back yeah. together. And, and you do that yeah. often. Um, but the other thing I was And he's been a great friend to me. Not, right. to, just, not to step on what you're saying. Yeah. But, like... You know, even you know, throughout the years after I was gone and wandering around in the darkness for a fucking decade, you know, he was still there for me. Yeah, you know, as much as he could be. Well, that was the thing. So even so, Batista was on with with Satin the other day, and we were talking about the whole James Gunn situation, right? Yeah. And and he asked him about. He's like, and Ryan had said to him, "You were there for him." Defended him on uh, Twitter this whole time. He said, "Well, that's what friends do." Yeah. He's like, "You got to be up there for your friends." And yeah. I think it's very similar. Where like, because I've never in all of your interviews and everything you said, not once have you said, "Well, Triple H turned his back on me." You know, never, you know, never. He was always never. there for you. What yeah. do you mean yeah. as as much as he could be though? He's, you know, I mean, with this position. Yeah. And and also when I say as much as he could be is like, you know, I mean, if like I'll just say like, there was one time I reached out. For help, and I was given it, and then I shit all over it because yeah. I reached out for help that I wasn't ready to take, you know. And you know, I was, you know, he came out here and flew me to Atlanta, and him and Vince spent money, like you know, thirty grand, putting me to rehab that I was out. I got kicked out of in a fucking month. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. so I you mean, had to that deal, kind you had to of deal thing. with your own demons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had to deal with them, and yeah. And so, so you're saying then the next time you reached out, they were like, no, no, because, no, oh. no. The next, um, next time, I didn't reach out like somebody else did because that was like you know the deal where I hung myself down in Mexico. Yeah, and we've talked about right. that before. Um, and somebody. So yeah, out no, to they him. were there for me then too. Right. There, there was like the first time I was talking about. Um, there was no wellness policy, so right. that came out of Hunter and Vince's pocket, right? Wow. You know, I gonna feel sorry for. For you know, for it coming out of Vince's pocket, but like right. at the time, that was still a fuck ton of money for Hunter to just you know. Well, but that's but that's one of the things that I think because a lot of times, and we've talked about it on this show too. A lot of times, I think Vince and and WWE does get a lot of shit for sure. like some of the shit that happened back yeah. in the day with a lot of the wrestlers, and some of the stuff I think that should be commended because yeah. Triple H is one of the boys, yeah. so he wanted to take care of him because if you look like, and and, and DDP obviously is a, is a guy that that yes. should be looked upon as well too because. Watching what happened with Jake and and with uh, Razor and then with yourself, it's people should. I think those folk those stories should be focused on more too. Because how long? So if you don't mind, like how did you get yourself out of that hole? It it was not a you know I crawled up out of it overnight. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, it took a while, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I went through stages. You know, like um, you know some people like they go okay, um, you know I'm sober this long, I'm clean this. Long and like, yeah, but not everyone gets off of everything all at once, right? You know, right. so I mean, so when at one time you never knew if I was gonna go off on a fucking you know month long meth binge, yeah, you know, um, um, 
so when I'm no longer doing that, you're just grateful that I'm only taking pills. Right. You know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. And so but you were able, but eventually you can, because the reason I also asked yes. that, my, my brother was, was pretty heavily into pills and stuff yeah. too for a long time. And it just, it, it fucks you up and yeah. your whole body. And like you said, it's like, oh, you don't want, yeah. you don't, you, you're just glad he's not doing that now. Yeah. You're glad he's doing, and then you finally get to a place where you're like, okay, well, he's, He's more the person like you yeah. became Sean again, you know, because yeah. you're in that you're in that fog slowly. Yeah, yeah but it be, took a while. Yeah, and uh, and you know, so uh, For a while there I was doing okay and doing fine, you know uh, a lot better than you know People are just happy like they weren't worried about me dying, right? Yeah, you you're know, starting to become imminent. Yeah, 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 well, right. Yeah, but. so and then and then China died right and uh, And so I came out here for for her, her memorial. Yeah, and uh, and I'd already met Kevin Undergaro and Maria. I knew Maria a little bit and Menounos. Yeah, of course. And uh, and so when I got out here, I I hit Kevin up because you know he had approached me and said, "Hey, you should be doing this." And like and you know Kevin's always trying to help people. Yeah. And um, and so I fucking took him up on it. And uh, and I moved out here. And um, I. I stayed in in one of their houses for I don't know it was like over a year and I uh, just you know just and they they sent me to their hypnotherapist oh shit uh, yeah okay. just all yeah. kinds of like and that was a huge breakthrough for me yeah huge and just being surrounded with all these people like Roxy yeah like Roxy's one of these people mm, sure. um so yeah so that was huge yeah yeah and then and you know so um. So you felt again, just, yeah. just, just kind of hitting it over there. You felt like you were you again, and you kind of came back. And, I felt and... like, actually, to it's actually more than uh, I felt like me again. I felt like this person. I didn't even a better version. Yeah, yeah. like the best yeah. version ever. Yeah, you know. And, well, so at what point then? Because like you said the, the uh, Triple H and those guys were always there for you. Yes. But at what point do they go from okay, he's getting better to like? Come back and now we want yeah, you working for us now. Exactly. Where, how it's do you get still, there? It, it's still, um, you know, it's still taking time for yeah. that, and I get it. It's I get good, it, right? You know, like the shit me. that yeah. I've done, like you know, or that I've been through, and you know, like choices, the fucked up choices I made. You know, so like sometimes we're always going to be sweeping up after ourselves, right? right. Yeah. Uh, but and that's fine. But yeah. you know, they. Um, yeah, I don't sweep. I don't have to sweep up nearly as much as I used as much to. Anymore. Right? Well, do you yeah. use that though? Is like for when you're working with a new talent like Ab- NXT. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So it's kind of a motivational thing to yeah. let them know because like, this is there's the positive things of this business. Yes. There's a way that if you don't go the right path, you can go that way. Look at what I did. Yes. Don't do that. And you, that's that type yeah. of stuff. Yeah. yeah, but without being a hypocrite yeah. and 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 also realizing that some of these mistakes, these guys and ladies are going to have to make on their own. Right. You know. Uh, and just try to be there for them, you know, once they do. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. You were talking about getting out of the darkness. And I think something interesting you've told me before, Sean, is that um, the the program didn't necessarily work for you. That wasn't something that no, really it's... helped you uh, in the long run. What do you what do you, you say mean to the 12 step program? Yeah. 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 The, the 12 step program. What I, do you... I, it's just um, there are things about that program that did help me a lot. Yeah. You know, but there are also things about it, and 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 some people in that community have gotten up to speed, and and you know, um, with the times, right? Like, uh, I guess for the opioid crisis going on, and people can die the right. first fucking time they try something like that, right? Yeah. Um, uh, but you, you know, there are medications for that, and I used one of them for three years. To come off of opiates, oh, I was a hardcore okay. opiate yeah, user. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I was hardcore at every fucking drug I yeah. did. You know, um, so I was on Suboxone for three years and weaned myself off of that. Fuck, and it, that that is a lifesaver. And you know, when you have people in twelve step community saying you're you're not doing it right, you're not really sober, you're not clean because you're taking a, a medication. You know that you don't you know fucked up on walking around on Suboxone. Right. Um, but you know, some people see it as I don't know cheating or whatever. I'm just like worried about like not what that person in 
AA things. I'm worried about how my fucking life is. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm going and and I'm and I'm having a quality of life and um and I'm stable and I'm talking about that. Yeah. Because I got off of that. Well, I've been off of all that for years. Are you are you just all clean pot. right now? You're just pot. Yeah. 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 But what do I'm you what use? they call California sober. I've heard that expression. Yeah, it works. <laughs> well, it works for me. Yeah. So, uh, so that afterwards, the two of us will we'll get in the car. You can drive. I'll sit in the back, and then, uh, but I won't. I won't He's learned his lesson. <laughs> what do you tell people though? Because I'm sure that you have tons of DMs or people coming up to you yeah. asking, "How do they do it?" Yeah. They look to you for yeah. advice because your your method has been very different and maybe even unconventional. How do you advise people when they come to you and they say they're trying to get clean or change their life around? Wow. I don't know. That's a tough question. I, I, it depends on the person and their situation, Rox. I mean, because people do hit me up quite a bit, and and sometimes you just feel like you know you get, you just get that feeling. Okay, this person. Not that they all don't need you, but like okay, you just get this vibe that okay, this person can really just use a few kind words, and it's sometimes it's just letting them know you fucking. You know, see them. Yeah, yeah. you there? Yeah. Hey, I'm I'm here. I see you. Like I hear you. Um, uh, there's hope. Right. Sometimes there's just a- fucking tell them because, like, I don't know too many people, and I've not heard like a lot of people's stories to where they were as bad off as I was. Like, fucking, a lot of people thought I was hopeless. Yeah. I mean, fucked up, and now here I am. Right. You know, so like there's hope for everyone. Like the person that you go, oh, fuck, there's no hope for that guy. There's hope for him. Right. Trust me. It's just about, like I said, it's just yes. a matter of how do you find the right path? It's just a matter of because, like, stay you, in like the you course said, right. and not giving up. Right. You know, and trying new things. And if AA doesn't work, um, you know, uh, try fucking hypnotherapy. I don't know. Like, try just, try everything. Yeah. Yes. Anything and everything. And it is And try, of, you know, like, yeah. uh, you know, there's different things. Like, um, you know, it wasn't my way of doing it, but like uh, Chris Bell has, you know, he had uh, Bigger, Stronger, Faster, yeah, the documentary. And he also did one called Leaf of Faith about uh, Kratom. Okay. And that's like this, anyways, it's a leaf. Yeah, yeah. But uh, different it's been pe- demonized. Different folks. Yeah, yeah, and it works for them. And yeah. it's like, you know what? The as fucked up as everything is now, like whatever works for you, right? All right, we don't have time for this. Oh, you're not doing it right, bullshit anymore. People are fucking dying. Yeah. Every time you turn around, someone's dying. But do you do you, have you also throughout this whole kind of process too like hitting the gym and stuff too, and, and exercise that get, get, keeps your mind a little more straight? Yeah. There's yeah, it's, I mean, because the best antidepressants are are a, a good diet and and. Exercise, yeah. and they're the most underutilized of anything out there for people. Yeah, did going you through shit. when you were in your in the, the the dark stages? Were you kind of going away from that a lot, and not hitting the gym, and kind of staying away from the gym as much? I did it as a necessity to to at least like half ass look the part. Yeah, you know when yeah. I was going and doing matches. Right. Yeah. Well, because I say that because you look great, man. I, mean, you I look feel at, good. You, yeah, you look great. So it's, it's I put on a little weight after WrestleMania because I was like, eh, fuck, I'm started eating. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. carbs. <laughs> I, I, I have never seen you eat a carb. Oh fuck! <laughs> yeah, it's been around me in the last couple of months. Uh, Holy shit! Well, let's let's kind of let's move on. First of all, th- I couldn't uh, thank you enough for being so honest and open too, because that's I think that is a big help for a lot of people out there Huge. too to hear it. But uh, I want to talk a little bit more about you know the, the business in general yeah, too, uh, because it's it's one and not to harp again on on and just uh, like Ambrose or, or Moxley too with, with that particular. But that's thing. what's going on right now. That's what's going yeah. on right now. So like the one thing that I always wondered about and Roxy's brought it up on this show is because his wife is you know with Renee being, yeah. being there too it, how do you everybody's worry that she's going to get pushback from it and I can't imagine that that's going to be the case because it's like it's not it's not her she was not, she's not saying these things I I don't see that happening right. but like I do like I can I can see there being like some awkwardness or weirdness yeah Maybe right because you're because you still got it because you, yeah. you can go home and have a conversation sure. with your husband and say you know yeah hey what's going on but it's like do you because a lot of people and I think yourself included too have left the company been on interviews yeah. talked about stuff too what I've noticed is Vince seems to be very forgiving down the line people don't oh, realize yeah, it yeah. with I mean he let Bischoff in Bischoff was in was number one competitor is it like people come back like you got to assume that he's even, brought back. He brought back someone that threatened to kill his family. Oh, really? I mean, yeah. he brought back the warrior. 
I mean, yeah, remember he brought back the warrior? Like, cause I, I'm, I remember. You can't being, say who Sean. Uh, no, no, nah. he's dead. The person's dead yeah. anyway. That doesn't matter. But I, I, I've just given you an example. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can yeah, make sure, some sure. money with somebody. Wow. He's like, yeah. he I remember being on a plane and with everybody, and Warrior was getting heat from every single person on that plane that they just didn't like the dude. And when I years later, gone comes back. Yeah. Bret Hart comes back. And yeah. If you, one person you thought was never going to come back was Bret Hart. Right? Well, that was because I never thought Brett would do it. That's on, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. End. Yeah, yeah. And, and then because, and we'll play, even the fact Brett spit in his face in front of all yeah. and but it just shows that he will let people back. I think eventually down a lot of people, oh, Moxley, or he'll, he'll never come back. Yeah. I don't know if you can say that. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, yeah, yeah. don't ever say something like that. Yeah, because I, yeah. I don't think it's possible. But what do you think about as far as the overall talent that's going on in WWE right now with like, because. For me, I, I still think like the, the ladies are putting on a hell of a show right yes. now, man. There's so much good talent. Are there people that you have your eye on in NXT that you think are going to pop? They're going to be like the the next big thing. Yeah. Can you tell us who you think is going to be the next big thing? <sighs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? What are we grabbing? I want to see. I just. Oh, it's oh, just some it. shit. Actually, some paperwork I had. I love it. Yeah, I want to know. Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> um. It's very studious of you, Sean. I know, Professor it's true. Sean it in just, the house. I like Professor. It just happened to be in my bag. Yeah, because NXT is getting so I'm much a love, fucking man. Fucking slob, and I don't clean my bags out. Yeah. Um. Hey, I th- honestly, I yeah. think that um, I think on the on the on the women's side, yeah. like, uh, Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair. Yeah. Okay. How come? She has, has all the tools. Yeah. All the fucking tools, and just needs experience. Yeah. Um. Uh, well, all of the Shayna Baszler, she's my favorite of, of all the women. Yeah, all of them. Um, oh fuck! Right, well, Matt Riddle is the Matt, man. Matt Riddle, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, uh, he's yeah. like to me, he's a prodigy. I, 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 Riddle and the guy they call Damian Priest yep. now, yep. who's Punishment Martinez. I, I, I trained with those guys. I wouldn't train with them at the Monster Factory a little bit when they first started. Yeah. Um, what do you do, Sean, when you're training with them? What is it? You're teaching them moves. You're teaching them mental. No, you're teaching them philo- philoso- like philo- like I did train with them. You know, like got them out a little bit and got in the ring. But it's more about your experience, right? It, yeah, yeah, it's like okay, so you should do this here and then do this there, and like you know, you already know how to do the moves. So this is what you do in between the moves. Yeah, and, you know, this is how you make the people feel certain right. things and because that type of thing never changes really right. but what do you what do you think from like when you in the heyday like during the attitude era to like now like what's what's yeah. the difference as far as kind of how how people should be used to it because it's, it's more like an organ i mean not organized it's always organized but it's more like um the machine is very different these days and when, when i was there and yeah. when you know, back in the heyday you know so how would you what do you think the differences are between your time and 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 now Oh, it's just the machine is just so much bigger, yeah. and it's just easy to get lost in that. And you know, I mean, the writing team, like this, like that whole thing, man. Yeah. Like the writing team, and like just how things are done, and like the process is just so much different, man. Right, it's true. You know, and like for me to come in here and say this is how it is, and the, you know, that w- that would be kind of bullshit of me. I, yeah. I I do know what you know. Yeah, a lot of what's going on around there, but where do you think it will be, or what do you think it will look like in five years, ten years from now? Completely different, or you yeah, think- I think it's going to be like things are going to change a little bit around there. I yeah. think you know, um, things do. I think they, they can always do. Yeah. You know, like there there's some things that can be done better, and I think eventually they will be. When and, I and you know like um, and the NXT talent, and, and you know like you know the. You know that is still technically the developmental yeah. system, but um, you know that could be a standalone brand. It really is already yeah. too. Because so my my story of it was that I, like I said, it was where I was a big fan. When I stopped, when I when I let go, um, I stopped watching. I was like, it was, yeah. it was one of these things. I was hurt by it, but I also think that it was it was part of that to where I saw the way that the, everything was being made, and I was like, that was like being a fan of hamburgers and you're being inside the factory. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. If but when we started this thing, by the way, thank you again. Thank you in person for being part of one of our movie trivia showdown angles, yeah, with, which was awesome. It was yeah. a lot of fun with Team Action. Um, and we started that thing, and I was like, I got to get back into it and kind of watch again and, and and catch up with the shit that I used to love. And I joined the network in 2016. I, I think the, the WWE Network's one of the smartest things that was ever. You can access everything and all that and just watching 
um, and maneuvering this, uh, I, I kind of I did the same thing you did. I kind of forgot where I was going at the beginning of it too, to where we dude, I do that. You do it all the time. I just I just half a dozen times a I, day. I just did. It. I had I had a point that I was making too. Well, you were talking about NXT developmental. Thank you, thank you. Mm-hmm. So NXT, um, was, that was one of the things everyone said. You got to watch NXT because it was it, it came it was like 2015 was when it really kind of started yeah. around that area. So I was I was still before my time. So I go back in there and I'm watching it. And what they're doing there, it felt to me, that was the old school kind of wrestling part of it that I feel is missing today in in, in the big show because the machine's so big, right? And people are responding to it because I feel like the championships matter more. I feel like there's a ranking system. I feel like there's a little bit more of that that I- The simplicity in storytelling. Yeah, Yeah, that's what I I loved kind of. And so it's got to be pretty exciting to work in this. You need a nuclear physicist to figure out what the (laughs) fuck's going on storyline-wise. Right. Right. And that to me, that's that's kind of what I what I liked, and I think that the championships matter because yeah. that's, and I know it's different because of you know you want the talent to be fighting all the time too. But I loved like when Savage was champion from like WrestleMania four to WrestleMania five and those long runs. It gave the yeah. titles more feeling, and I think that NXT does that a little bit more. Would you do you think that that's? I think so. Yeah. 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 Like, is, and and is that and that's and that's Triple H, right? That, Absolutely. Yeah. So he is there. A, is there a time? And again, I don't want to. And, and it's great because okay, so. Um, the thing about NXT is you have not only you, you got I mean just okay like anyone that's not you know maybe gobbled up by you know New Japan or yeah yeah AEW or yeah. whatever like the cream of the crop in the wrestling industry is in that roster NXT roster and you have um, some amazing like. Just incredibly wise people there that are mentoring them. Yeah. Um, from Terry Taylor. Yeah. And people can say, you know, they can make Red Rooster That's jokes or right, whatever right, the right, fuck right. they want to do. But those of us in wrestling that have worked with Terry, like Hunter, yeah. myself, uh, we both know because we learned a fuckload from Terry Taylor. Right. Um, He's got a respect from the locker room. That's all, yes, you, that's all you need. Yeah. That's yes. All you need. And, yeah. and then. You have Shawn Michaels, who has a special, like, it's like, you know, it's almost like a secret. You don't know what the fuck is being said in there, right? right? In his class. And, like, that's all the cream of the crop. The when did top he come guys back, there. though? Because maybe, didn't, he, what, didn't he, took, he took, he wanted to just kind of go off and do his own thing for a while, right? Yeah, and, then, and, then he, and he but, did it. He, and, and now he, he missed it. He missed all this and being around all this. And just, and I don't want to speak for him, but, you know, he's told me how, how satisfying this is for him. And, yeah. and I get it because I've gotten some of that. You know, we get that that fix right yeah. that f- like right in the vein. You know, drug like it's like a drug for yeah. us to go out there, and there's really not a lot. We don't think there's anything that could compare. But Sean said this, and I agree because I felt it a little bit. Like being the person that helps like put those matches together, yeah. like the the Adam Cole versus you know Gargano or the the Riddle versus. You know, Roderick Strong that opened it up that or just fucking next level out of this world matches. Right. Being a part of those, you get that vicarious fucking fix, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. So do you think is it is it kind of like a, a little bittersweet though too? Because if you put on big matches like that, right, too, and as it there is obviously so super super satisfying, guys like Riddle when they pop but when they go over to the WWE and you lose guys like that, Oof. is it just like is it kind of kicking the in the balls for a second? And then when and then like when when you see how they get handled, yeah. Once they get up there, and it's just like, oh fuck. Yeah, is that is that part of? Is there a writing team in NXT, NXT or is it just? But I mean, like a yeah, full, they, yes, but like a full, as, as big of a writing team. Okay, cool. I don't know how big. Like I've been in the writing rooms at NXT, and but I've not been in a right in a in a SmackDown or a Raw writing room. It was crazy, man. When I was there, I mean, I was even again like eight, nineteen yeah. years ago. It was they. I remember how it was done. It was that I okay. Here are the people you got to write for. You got to do this. Do, this is a storyline. Hit them on bring in Vince, yeah. and then Vince would go through it. Take that out. Put that in. That's good. Take it over there, and then yeah. he could change it five seconds beforehand if you wanted to. So, and that was when it was really first started. I couldn't even imagine now, nineteen years later, what it's like. But I think in NXT, you probably have a lot more breathing room because yeah. Hunter's kind of doing his thing and knows that it's more about the kind of the, sure. the wrestling. Sure, and yeah. just the, his team around him, Joe Bell Castro. Yeah. Um, and everyone else there, you know, like that just kind of comes together and makes that happen. Right. You know, like, you know, I see Sean sitting in and, and, and adding his two cents to all that and just everyone. Yeah. It's like, you know, and and uh, 
but I, like what, what I was getting at with the, you know, the Terry Taylors, the Sean, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you, Road Dog is there now. Right. Um, you know, to, you know, like all the, the incredible talent out there and like the independent seed and all that, like they've gotten really good. Yeah. And, and great, like, on their own. Figuring out things on their own, right? Like, trying to figure out, like, psychology and all that. And and uh, um, and they've done an amazing job but, like without having, like, these 30-year veterans, like, in the ring with them. Right. Passing on the knowledge. Um, oh, fuck, I just had a brain fart. <laughs> you did the same. Yeah. Well, as far as, like you, like you said, they, they, these, these kids who are kind of learning their yeah. own thing, watching it through, and, and but, yes. they, but they still have people talking, like like yourself, because that, that'll help, but yeah, they but use so, but that. But not like you do in NXT when you have one of the greatest, arguably the greatest that's ever fucking done it. Right. Passing on this knowledge right. to, to talent that's already, like, right up there, best in the world talent, and then they're getting the Shawn Michaels level fucking wisdom dropped on them. Right. And that's why you're seeing these NXT shows that are just fucking mind blowing. Right. That's, and that's, that makes a lot of sense because that's what people are saying. Now the question is because it's got so much love behind it, is there more do you think that will be, because like, look, again, AEW has this, right now it's got it's got this thing, sure. people are looking forward to it and, and maybe thinking that this could be a different alternative to what it used to be, right? Yeah. If AEW blows up the way people think that it could once the TV yes. deal comes, do you think A, WWE might do a shift in the way that they do things or will they give NXT more of a push. Do do you have any idea what you think might happen? That's how I. That's that's how I would do it. Yeah, uh, that would NXT. be my answer to yeah. AEW. Would be you know. Well, here's a, you know. Throw some more money in NXT. Absolutely. Let, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, because that's because that's they're essentially yes. doing because AEW looks like they're doing what and, NXT is and doing. And maybe take some of like the talent that really goes out there and fucking crushes it in the yeah. ring, and maybe take a couple of them and from Raw or SmackDown and. Move them to NXT. Right. Right? Right. And just mix yeah. some of that, you know, fucking... Yeah, well, the whole game's going to change top, once this top. Fox deal happens, yeah. too. Because it's going to be like, what's going to happen with then you get Fox, yeah. and you got AEW. It's an f- exciting time to be wrestling. It's amazing. It's an exciting time because I think, like, like you said, I couldn't agree with you more. I think that... Put enough money into it. Get NXT more exposure than just the network. Yeah. Find a way to get because that's that's going to be the answer to AEW. Because if yeah. they switch up the whole machine with the WWE with SmackDown and Raw, it's going to look like an immediate yes. answer. As opposed to say we're already doing that on NXT. That's right. Yeah. Sean, I can't stop staring at your ring. Oh yeah. Because it just looks so freaking awesome. <laughs> on your I don't know what you're talking about. This is a, a weird question, but do you feel different walking around wearing that? Like, are you always aware that it's there? And, and I'm always twenty four really cool. seven. Yeah, we're talking every about second it. of the day. We're talking I'm about like, the Hall of Fame uh, ring. ring here because DX was. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, that's amazing. It was a really cool moment for you, man. I'm, I'm excited that, that 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 was able to happen. Tell me a little bit about that. Like, so when when you get the phone call that DX is going in, like, because well, I was just like <laughs> caught me off guard because I was already kind of going over a few things with them. You know, hey, I uh, need you to re-sign your Legends deal. You know, just so happens, like, because, you know, the way the the climate, like, you know, like, AEW, all that yeah, shit, yeah. I think they just want to make sure I was... Makes sense. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm just like, eh. You know, um, I, I don't get into my, like, in-depth sure, conversation. Sure, no. But, so I thought that when I got the call... That that was something having to do with that, okay. and then Carano dropped it on me. You know, like you know that we're going to Hall of Fame. Yeah, and well, so you were not like, expecting that. No. Yeah. No. And well, the, and one of the main things too that was the big, well, obviously that's a big story. But the, one of the biggest stories too is that when China was finally going in. Yeah. You know, and like I'm sure that was you probably went through a whole mix of emotions during that. I was just incredibly happy yeah. about that. Yeah. That's, yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. So the, no, I mean she deserves it. Right. As much as anyone. It was a cool yeah. moment too. And the other thing, so and it was great. Her mom was there, and yeah. you know her sister was there, and. Um, did you get yeah. a chance to talk with them? I did. I couldn't fucking believe when I looked in her mom's eyes. It was like looking in, in her eyes. Oh, yeah. It was fucking like crazy. so crazy. Yeah. yeah. And the conversation was cool and yeah. everything. Was awesome. That's yeah, great. absolutely. It's great. I just, you know, when it comes to all that and yeah. different people like, you know, that are closely, were closely involved in that and you get kind of wound up and, and caught up in all that. Uh, like, it's just crazy to me at this point for anyone to be bickering. Back yeah. and forth in any of that. Yeah, we get older. We it, it, it's some of these things we just want to. It's peace. just you know it's she's yeah. you know she's not here anymore, yeah. and you know let's 
come on. Respect the memory. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, one of the other cool things about the Hall of Fame, too, is so another guy that's been so great to us, and we just did an event in, in, uh, in Texas City, was yeah, Booker T. I know. <laughs> um, he's, he's the man, dude. I love Booker. And to yeah. see Booker going in twice, um, I mean, that's – because you guys, are, you guys are pretty tight also. You We're Booker. tight, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not like we're on a fucking – Phone every, you know, no, but, but you I'm guys, not on the phone with anyone every right. day. Trust me. <laughs> right. So yeah, I'm yeah. still waiting for a few responses yeah, from my text no. messages, no. Sean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm the worst at that. That's probably a good thing though, <laughs> too. Right. I wish I could be bad at it because I, I, I'm probably not. You didn't respond to me last night. See, there we go. I'm getting better. I'm getting better at being bad. For you. That's true. So, um, <laughs> what do you, what do you think that, like, so if you had, um, again, because you have aspirations, whether it's NXT, what, do, what yeah. do you want? What for this new phase in your career, what you're doing here? What do you want to accomplish? What do you want to get done? Oh, wow. I just want to, um, like I've been doing with, with uh, at NXT, I just want to, you know, be part of passing that knowledge down, you know, making sure it's passed on to the, this yeah. next generation. And You know, I should have been doing it for a while, but I just happened to be fucked up for about a dozen years. So, right. you know, um, but now I'm, I'm here and I'm present and I'm like able to help out with that. And I'm grateful to yeah. be able to help out with that. Do you get a chance to because it, Razor still is still doing yeah. good, right? So Razor and uh, and um, and Jake and all those yeah. guys. Did you do you get a chance to? Because I would have thought that maybe maybe you guys do this, and I'm just uh, don't know. I would put you, all you guys together and say, look, these are, everyone talks about the stories of the guys, that the tragic stories. Look at these guys. Yeah. And look what they've done. Do you guys ever go and, and talk to anybody and and have conversations? Do you get along with all three of those guys, by the way, too? Or ish? I get along with everyone. You get along with everybody. Yeah. So so was that something that you would you would do, or it's like, or you're focusing on other stuff? I you know I have done different things. Uh, like I, I work with a drug treatment center actually, awesome. um, and so I've gone and done a couple of town halls w- w- with, with them. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. You know, and just talking to people that are desperate and don't know yeah. what the fuck to do because their kids are fucked up or right. they're fucked up or, Yeah, because you, you know. look at Jake, man, when that, when that Beyond the Mat, was yeah. it Beyond the Mat when that came out? And yeah. I remember seeing, I was, I was, I saw it here. It was one of the first movies I saw when I moved to LA, and I saw Jake and I was, and I was devastated because Jake was such a talent. Like, Jake was so yeah. good and I was like, fuck, and then he showed more, there was an ESPN thing on him and then Razor too and, and, so I used to do a show at Roddy back in the day with the Rod Pod. I was, yeah. I was, I used to co-host a lot of his shows with him. And I remember DDP came on and said, and he said on the show that in the episode, he's like, I want to find Jake. I want to help Jake. Yeah. And did. And like that is, so did, did, do you talk to DDP at all about like, I that, do. the process too? Because isn't that a, I do. That he a great, can, and, 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 and Dallas is very patient with me. Um, he's been, he's been on my ass about coming down there and yeah. um, spending some time down there. This place and getting certified in DDP yoga. And, yeah. Um, have you thought about it? Yeah, yeah, I have. But just not, not, not. Yeah, I just yeah. have a, like a lot of shit going on. Yeah, and yeah. especially like even if I don't like, my brain fucking feels like I have a lot of shit going on right, right all right. the time. What right. is that? Why? I don't know. It's just fucking. Right. There's a lot going on in there. Like if you like, yeah, I don't. Know, I'll go off into the weeds on that. That's, <laughs> That's cool. But. Uh, but yeah. I think with the DDP thing, it's kind of like you were saying before, whatever works for you. So yeah. right now you're doing pretty sure. well. So. Yeah, so like when talking about Scott, for instance, you yeah. know, like he, he'd been through a dozen treatment centers, right? Like, So it's not like he didn't already know, or, or me either, right? Like it's not like we didn't already know what they fucking tell you in those yeah. places. Yeah. So, like, you know, the, then it was just I called, I don't know what else to do, right? Like, you know, I was still, you know, not as fucked up with uh, as Scott was but like I wasn't like you know Mr. Sobriety or right. sobriety or anything like like I just knew Scott was gonna die if yeah. I didn't do something so I reached out to Dallas and then that's how all that oh happened. wow look yeah. at that I didn't yeah. I didn't realize that you made the call that's because yeah. they know he wanted yeah, to do he for talks, so long. they talk about it in the in the documentary oh, they did. that's yeah. fantastic yeah. okay good um that's great I mean it's not so trying I to like pat myself on the no, back no, no, I just no, no, don't no, 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 it goes back to exactly what you said before he's your buddy yeah. That was your buddy, and you were you were there for him the same way Hunter was there for you too. That's yeah. awesome. It's fantastic. Um, one of the, a little more like, a lighter side of things too, and this is probably a gen- generic thing you've gotten a million times, but I just wanted to know who do you think is the best on the mic all time. Man, <sighs> you can you can put three in there, and then who you think is the best? Because Flair's got to be in there. You know, yeah. uh, F- Flair, um, Roddy. Yeah, well, Roddy, but like, okay, manager wise, I'm a Paul Heyman guy. Yeah, Paul's pretty good. Paul, yes. I, Paul, Paul was fantastic to me, too. Yeah, he was great. Yeah. Um, Paul's really good. Um, so you'd say Paul, manager all time. 
Bobby Heenan's got to I know, too. and hey, look, nothing because yeah. obviously Bobby, Bobby, fucking, you know, all, a lot of guys are amazing, right? Yeah. Uh, but no, um, Paul. Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what What about as far as in the ring? Who's the best in the ring all the time? I, I, you know, depending on your taste, I, I mean, Brad or Sean. Yeah, I'd probably go. I, yeah. I, would, I would pick one of those two guys for yeah. sure, too. I mean, just. I think I, I am not going to argue with either one of them. Yeah, because just what. I remember, so I was at Nassau Coliseum in 91, and I remember uh, my dad used to take me to the house shows all the time, and I saw Bret Hart, yeah. and he used to, he would, he would fight all the time. And it was just, it was, you were in awe of him, of just watching what, what he was doing. And he do. went out there, and, you know, you knew you were going to get like a 30 minute fucking yep. classic. Match from him, yeah. right? Every night, whether it was televised. Yes. Or not. Oh, spe- yeah. Every absolutely. Single time. He was yeah. a straight up pro, man. What so, about yeah. best woman of all time in the ring? Ooh, wow. Um, from my era, like no one, I, to me, no one can touch uh, Medusa, Alundra Blaze. Oh shit! Yeah, Alundra yeah. Blaze, right? Too. I was there. I mean, when I was there, Lita was kind of the one that was. Yeah. You know, just because she, she would just put her body in such yeah. crazy. But yeah, Blaze was pretty pretty awesome. No, uh, yeah, like honestly, like wrestling, yeah. like as a wrestler, also like not just you know doing some spots or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's awesome. Do you she have, was all Japan women. Like yeah. you know, like to go over there and go through all that is insane. Like it's, insane. No shit. You put through. You put yeah. yourself through a lot. But you're going back to the, the. I guess the Hall of Fame too, and yeah. and Bret Hart there too, and Kevin Undergar linking it all together was when that lunatic jumped in the <laughs> ring. When that, when that lunatic fan jumps in the ring and tackles Bret fuck Hart, beat out of him. got the <laughs> shit beat out of him, and Good. deservedly so. Yes, and deservedly so. I mean, because that's isn't that's the rule though for you guys in general, right? Because you've seen videos, and there was one time where Hunter was fighting uh, Steve Austin, and some guy gets in yes. there, and then Hunter because the guy attacked Steve, and Hunter beat the piss yes. out of the guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but that's like a rule, right? Wait, now. Why it makes you laugh so hard? Because it's part it. of the rule. Because you know, because like, well, okay, because it's kind of. Em- I'm gonna say it's embarrassing, but usually I am like really passive, and I don't want to. I don't even want to fucking. I barely want to swat a fly. No, I'm yeah. looking at you with Lula, your dog, on your lap right now. <laughs> and then, just, like, yeah. something like that happens and throw all that shit out the fucking window. Yeah. Beat that guy's fucking Cause, ass. Because that's your family. You're goddamn they're, right. They're coming in your family. Because you guys yes. are putting your bodies on, on the line every single day, and some guy who doesn't know what the fuck he's doing comes in. If and someone has a problem with me saying that and feeling that way, I understand. I don't think many people will. I think some people that's in, just maybe fine, here and there. Way. Because well, cause we did this whole thing. We had this whole debate on it that day. It was, and I can't well, remember. We talked about the legality of it. We talked about the legality of it. Yeah, my, my thing was that I, th- I I have to assume, and you might know this better than I do, but uh, I have to assume that if you cross inside of that thing, it's all fair game. You can you won't have the right to sue. Like if you if you can sue, you can sue anybody, but you can you won't win. Like if you, I, I don't think so. Yeah, you, you won't win. Well, you, I mean, I just remember assault. how it used to be. But it's assault. Yeah. You're assaulting. What do you mean you remember how it used to be? I just remember like there weren't cameras everywhere, oh, right. and a guy oh. would jump the rail, and we beat it. the fuck out of him. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, well, it's that's again the thing is because you're that is full on assault. So if he's putting it, if he's performing against Shawn Michaels, and he jumps, and and I jump in the ring while they're doing this, you know, this dance, this mm-hmm. is just really and. They can no, beat the I piss agree out with you. I just wonder yeah, if there's legality. Well, I feel like if there is, somebody would do that just to be able to sue. There's plenty of crazy people who would jump in the ring to get money. Oh, you can you know sue, I mean? but I just don't think you'll win. Yeah. yeah, I just don't think it would be because yeah. you can. I think the argument, especially with the lawyers, but I'm sure that, that uh, Bret Hart and WWE's lawyers are a little better than than. Schmuck and also, and like, McGee. okay, even though you can see a couple couple guys get shots, and it's like. It's hard to really tell, like right. who shot did what damage. So it's like, yeah, I, I, good luck everybody, with that. yeah, everybody, everybody was like, you, you know, you, first of all, you, it's you, Bret Hart, the fucking fuck legend, out of man, here. get out of here. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I can't imagine what it was like back there to where, you, especially another reason why it's because it's supposed to be celebrating. It's yeah. right before WrestleMania. You have this big thing, and here's you know this putz who jumps in the ring and tries to do this thing. So it's like I'm sure it was also probably that type of joke to where like. Yeah, Brett's okay. Yeah, we beat the piss out of that. Yeah. Guy. That's kind of what it yeah. came down to. But how how was uh, how was WrestleMania this year? As far as the other side of uh, just kind of being, it's always a, it's always an extravaganza, obviously. But um, I got so fucking sick, man. Yeah, oh, yeah. did you? Oh, okay. Yeah, we did our we did our WrestleMania segment. Come yeah. out on stage, yeah. that big old thing, you know. And um, after that, I got I got out of there because I didn't want to get anyone sick. Like oh, I ended shit. up having to stay an extra day because I was like had fucking pneumonia. I would just hold up in your hotel. Yeah. Oh fuck. Yeah, but um, oh so no, I mean, man, those fucking things are so long, Christian. They, 
that, I'm glad you brought <laughs> that Fuck, up. Fuck, man. I'm glad you brought that up because here's my, here's, here was my problem this year with this year's WrestleMania because there were so many great marquee matches up, right? Yeah. So the Brock and Seth thing happens first. Yeah. And that was, and I, you know, it's Brock wanted wanted a different spot or whatever. So he comes in and he does, it, it, they, they started off, starts off big. It's a lot of energy there. But by the time you get to Ronda and Becky yes. and Charlotte, the audience is exhausted. Just done. It, yeah. Because I remember back in the day, WrestleMania four would be it's 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 still longer, but it would be three hours. It, it's yeah. it. And you can handle three, yeah. three and a half, right? Yeah. Six, seven hours. Is there any talk about them cutting it down or maybe even doing some more under like if or, there is, I haven't heard yeah, it. Yeah, I haven't heard it. Yeah. Yeah. Because isn't that a problem? Because trying to figure out how to make it longer, I think. I don't no. know. I, I don't understand it. Yeah. It's, I don't understand it either because it's like, because don't, but couldn't they tell that the energy was just kind of sucked out of the room by the time they got to the main sure. event? They, 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 yeah. knew, they, they did feel yeah. that. I think they just want to give everybody their due, right? They want yeah. to make sure that everybody has their stage and the biggest stage that there is. And, yeah. And, and so it was incredibly important for, uh, you know, the women to actually go on last. Yes. yes. You know, um, but yeah, they the people were spent by the time they got out there. But it was still like, I think they I think they did a great great job. I think, yeah. um, um, honestly, like t- to me, like the match that, and even later on after the people were fatigued, the yeah. match that they people really brought in was Kofi. Okay, oh, yeah. and Daniel. Yeah, and that, and that had the energy, and I think that that was yeah. the one that kind of w- sucked you know, the air out of the place. Yeah, because yeah. because it was this big, huge accomplishment from this guy that yeah. that should have had it like maybe years ago, yeah. right? That earned his spot, and that's the thing. And that's where Roxy and I talked about this last time. My thing is like, and back in the day, like uh, you would have to earn your spot. In, in WrestleMania, right. so it's like now everybody gets a spot, and it's like I think there's something special about the fact that like, look, no, this year we've got X amount of matches, three and a half. You didn't make it this year, kid. You're gonna yeah, do sorry. it next year. Yeah, yeah that's it. it's kind of like uh, if you look at the NXT Takeover yes. shows, there's five matches, right? And, and there's way more and it people on the roster. It's just like, look, yeah, there's five matches. Um, if the show is going to be this long, and it's that's it's. It's perfect that way. This is and the we're story not we're telling. This is the if story you want to be on the show, work right. your ass off to get on the fucking show. Right. And we're not going to have a battle royal or, you know, a fucking, or you know. throwaway match because you're a Ten-man tag or some yeah. shit. To, yeah. No, work your ass off and get and fucking get on the main show. Yeah, and I just wish that that would transfer over to uh, to the to, to WrestleMania because it's like it's one of those things you want because that's what everyone always talks about. Every single time this big main takeover is always the one. Takeover yeah. is always the one that people say – yeah, WrestleMania was fine, but did you watch? Did you see NXT last night? Every time from the second I started to come back to watch this thing, NXT was <laughs> because of what you're saying. It's like earn the spot. Is there any chance? Is it just because of maybe because they want to fill more spots for whether it's advertising and is that part of it too? Also, like people work all, all year, you know, and it's kind of like a you know throw them a bone. Yeah. Hey, okay, you get to be a part of WrestleMania. Right. So I get it. I get it. Um, I remember I was in a match like that when I first came there in, in 94 WrestleMania 10. Yeah. Um, and, the, the you know, Sean. MSG, and, right? Yeah, Sean yeah. and Razor, ladder match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It went long. Yeah, it did. And so, and our match was on right after that. It was a 10-man tag. And right. I didn't understand at the time that that was a throwaway match, collapsible match. Like, you know, if they have time issues, they just, whoosh, that yeah. match isn't going. Like, so I was ready to go out, and they were like, oh, no, your match is canceled right they don't do that anymore though right? does that crush yeah. you when that well, happens i did at the yeah, time right. and, and, you know i still got paid you know like right same amount of money i was gonna get paid but but it's wrestlemania yeah yeah you, you want to yeah. get that spot but that's and and the that's wife is up in the crowd yeah, waiting for her to come years. out and she's like what the fuck yeah 10 years after the you know from was, was it 95 94 yeah. so you're doing and you're doing it at that point it's is it, but, that, but again they made that decision to do it i think yeah. and i'm sure you think so too at the time it's the well, right it's the exact the right call to make right time, but they don't make they don't make that call anymore and it's you know it's one of the, and the other thing I got to bring up too. And, I, and also, it, they don't. It's you, you pretty much. It's everything's on the network. There's yeah. no like pay per view. Like okay, we only have three hours of satellite time. Right. We got to get it. You know, we got to get the finish on before they go off there. We're gonna have to give them refund. Right. And it's not that kind of thing anymore. They can make a nine hour event. Yeah. It's their It's their fucking yeah. network. Yeah. That's and I think that's that's probably a good thing and a bad thing. Because it, because of that because mm-hmm. it can go for so long. You can, and you, they, the, probably the way that they would say it is. Well, they have, they can pause it. They can come or, back. You know, like on. I look at it like okay, it's like a la carte. 
Okay, yeah. let me just decide which matches I want to watch. I want right? to watch. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I just I don't know I just look at it as kind of old school to where it's I want to I look basically what you were saying five matches in I want mm-hmm. give me a narrative from the second it starts yeah. because then I always bring back the old ones like even when you and I brought up it's probably the fifth time today with WrestleMania four was it the tournament it was the whole yeah. thing was the tournament but you knew there was a story up top where Hogan and Andre were so early on is that what's going to happen there but the narrative was savage from the whole way through fighting four matches the entire night that was the narrative oh and, four. WrestleMania, or talk about the, yeah, for yeah, the yeah. tournament. The tournament, yes, because yeah, yeah. it was, it was, in, it was in, in Atlantic City. Yep. And he was, it was like, you didn't know who was going to win. You kind of thought, because he had just gone babyface not too long ago. But there was that narrative. From yeah. the beginning to the end, it was all about Savage. And yeah. then teaming up with Hogan to f- eventually mm-hmm. form kind of the mega powers and watch Hogan pull a heel move and hit DiBiase with the chair. It's like, yeah. there was, from the start to finish, and with this WrestleMania that I saw, yeah, there's some characters, but there's no, like, there's no narrative. In yeah. between, I think that's one of the things that NXT has that it doesn't have. But absolutely, yeah. And you know, people will state the obvious. Well, it's a lot easier to do that with a one-hour show every week. True, true. Rocks. No, I'm just listening to you guys geek out over wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Still learning. Honestly, yeah. I've learned so, anything I know about wrestling, and I'm so proud of myself now, is because of Sean. Aww. Just listening to all that and Kathy Kelly. You guys yeah. go back and forth. I'm like, okay, now I can hang. Oh, I yeah. remember when I first met Rocks and I'd be. Like doing tomorrow show and yeah, yeah. Kevin would just start, you know, going off and we'd go on a fucking twenty minute rant. Oh, I could see rocks over there. I'm like, oh fuck. But then I got into it after. Uh, no, yeah. okay. I don't blame you. <laughs> no, I, I really. And then when I, uh, Sean, I went and saw your show yeah. with, uh, Ron, with Ron Funches. Funches. Yeah, yeah, which was great too. They go down yeah. like a crazy wrestling rabbit hole on yeah. that and started listening to one, two, I three, did, six. We did one and. Doubler and or Starcast in Sorry, Vegas man. a couple weeks ago. Right, right, right. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, Mike well, Lawrence sat, sat oh, that's in really with cool. us. And, well, what are you doing beside me? Because you still working? Oh, you still work with Kevin and stuff too? Yeah, so what, so still what, my show over there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, what, so tell so tell the the audience. So where, where can they find your show? What's the sh- the show and where can they find it? Is, that, is it over on Afterbus? Afterbus. Okay. Yeah, but I'm, I, I'm actually on my own YouTube channel, just YouTube slash X Pac, oh. and. Uh, the show's called X Pac One Two Three Sixty. It's oh, like cool. my third year. It's gonna... a, uh, so awesome! Thanks. He does the best job with That's this really show. Um, yeah, I'm just having a good time with it, yeah. and it's I've been grateful for it. Like yeah. it's given me something. To, like I don't, I don't think I've missed in three years. I didn't miss a show. That's awesome. Yeah. You just kind of love for it, right? That's yeah. really cool. And um, um, and so yeah, it's over the, and and so you could watch it on YouTube, and you could pick it up. It's on like twelve different fucking you know. Yeah. We still, have pod, pod, all the, we still have to get you. Yeah. We still have to get you better at Instagram, though, Sean. Because I'm still, working on it. I know. <laughs> My I know. girlfriend's a big. I mean, she's busy as fuck. She has her own yeah. career. She's a fucking boss. At, like, my girlfriend's a writer. Oh, she's cool. actually like the screenwriter. Screenwriter. She's the the co EP of the new um, sh- the new. Sh- Sitcom mixed dish that's oh. a spin off oh, yeah, yeah, of yeah, Blackish. Yeah, Blackish. yeah sure, yeah. sure. Oh, that's I didn't awesome. know you talked about having a girlfriend on air. Yay! Yeah, yeah awesome. she's she was she wrote Sean, Scrubs so for seven years. She's a fucking get out of here. Where'd yeah. you guys meet? On on Twitter. Oh, did you yeah. really? See, look, he's, he's using social media well. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And yeah, Twitter, so, he's great. It's just Instagram. I want to see what's happening. So, more but often. she 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 helped me with that because she started a thing called OK Player with Questlove from the Roots. Yeah, sure. Which was like this big social media thing before really social media even existed um and she anyway so yeah she's helped me get that up to speed that's awesome michael klaus a little bit Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's funny we have so many connections obviously through because kevin actually so when we were doing our show we started with when we were doing adam carolla's thing right so as we were on when that's when i met roddy over toad hop and was doing all that stuff and then once that went away, I was looking for a studio, and Kevin and I became uh, mm-hmm. involved, and he, he generously kind of put his studio. It was the house, you know, the house that they have over there. Yeah. And we, and we, and we I kind lived of built, there. Did, did that where yeah. you lived? That's oh, yeah, yeah. That's when I converted to the house <laughs> oh, after funny. that. Yeah. That's, that's where the Schmodown began. It began yeah. in that studio. It began in that studio with – because Kev, so we're kind of all – we're all that's how I met Rocks. Yeah. That's kind of how we're all linked to it. So it's, it's yeah. cool to kind of catch up with you again, brother. Yeah, sure. so like um, um, my show, I, I the the thing I'm really honestly most proud of with it is that like I've you know used it to 
um, you know, Christy Olsen, she got a job at NXT. She yeah. was there. Um, Christy St. Cloud. Yeah, yeah, she was called Christy St. Yeah. Cloud there. Um, Johnny LaQuasto. Johnny LaQuasto there, yeah. there yeah. now. Like, when I was just there. John Quasto. When I was just there, there was LaQuasto, Mark Donica. Yeah. Um, Kathy Kelly. Yeah. Smiley. Fucking uh, Thea Trinidad. Yeah, Thea Trinidad. All of them were down there, and That's it was so really crazy. cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Good mm-hmm. transition. Listen, you got to come back again. We can't do another 20 years. Okay. We can't do another 20 yeah, years. Yeah, man. Sean Waldman, <laughs> a.k.a. X-Pac. Uh, hey, man, and, and I'm just yeah. like huge fucking props to you for building all this, man. This oh, is thanks, great. brother. I appreciate yeah, it very much. It's so. fun. It's fun to like, to like... You know, I don't watch a ton of shit, but like I get, I see some of it. And I it's appreciate fun. it. Thanks, man. Yeah, I you really got a lot appreciate of big it. heavy hitters coming through. Anytime here. you text me about it, I'm like, Sean was watching yeah. our yeah, show. Yeah, cool. I watch. Oh, that's good, yeah. man. Cool, so good. Cool. I'm glad to have you on. And I'm a big fan of Roxy Stryer too. As you so be. anything she's on, I like to I am too. She's a fucking superstar. I said earlier, I was sitting there. I said, somebody compliment me. And that's you the compliment I needed God, for the yeah, day. Right. Well, we're going to end with a compliment. <laughs> Guys, thank you for joining us here on Collider Live. And once again, thanks to Sean and Roxy and Cody and, and Josh and Riley and everybody who joined us on the show today. Uh, we're going to be back tomorrow, obviously. We've got a full week of cool stuff going on on Collider Live. Get your tickets for the Schmodown Live at Comic-Con. And we also have the big event in New York that's going to happen in August. So theschmodownlive.com. Catch you tomorrow. Take it. You're all breathtaking.